<clears throat> all right. First and foremost, of course, got to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. Want to do so in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world calls Christ. Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. It's your brother, Chief Priest, Alice Abba, Lord, the Gorilla Hebrew. Yeah, this Chief Don't. Scary hours. Yeah. Somebody said, Chief Don't sleep. No, I do sleep. I, my ass was fast asleep before I got here. I tell you that now. I, I would have been started at midnight. When it laid it down. Let me tell you something. Man. I don't sleep on day. I'm going to tell y'all something about daylight savings. This is this my first year. I feel old now. In my first year of sleep, I'm usually in the club tonight. Taking advantage of one extra hour. <laughs> taking advantage of one going from 159 back to 1 a.m. This be the best night to be outside for real. It's scary hours, man. We got a good nap in through the spirit of power. Y'all bust me out. We, we, we teaching the Bible, man. Go ahead. Get them emojis. Get them scary emojis in the chat. It's Chief Dome. Oh, and we're monetized on Chief Dome. So if you feel like going ahead and dropping a good super chat, you know, you can do that too now here on Chief Dome. We have that option. I'm getting ready to put a membership. Because I got the two dollar drive on the main page, I'm gonna come with a special drive for the Chief Dome. The one dollar drive on the Chief Dome. It's gonna be one dollar. Really, for, for me, at seventy cents. That's all that's coming. <laughs> you two going to make sure they take that thirty cents up off of there. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, we are gonna go ahead and put that on there. Most I will soon to turn in this Chief Dome channel up, and you know what the Chief Dome is about. What I want to definitely do tonight this morning, whatever the hell it is, you know, um, is damn, they, they, they on a daylight savings hour now in California. Uh-huh. But yeah, I definitely want to open the floor up for questions. I see y'all to subscribe. Y'all make sure y'all share these videos. So chief Don can get out there, um, and make sure that you as well, um click the notification so you get updated on everything that's going on here on the chief don't channel all right this channel you know it's 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 just, it's going to be its own thing it's going to have its own um vibration so to speak versus uh the main page and other pages the urban gorilla page the card clips but every page is going to have its own identity through the spirit of the most high you know Every page. <clears throat> well, yeah, man, y'all go ahead and start with questions. We just going to move in the spirit and let these questions take us wherever we go. I got my reader here. You know, he's been woken up out of a deep sleep. <laughs> he's been woken up out of a deep sleep. All right. We all have. You know, spirit woke me up, though. You know what I'm saying? Spirit woke me up. About three and a half, four hours. Yeah, it's time to go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Scary hours. Okay, first question. Axe. He's asking me about Axe. <laughs> Acts 16, 20 to 21. What were the customs that Paul and Silas would have been teaching? Let's take a look at that. And I'm going to show you something. It's a good, very good question. And I'm going to show you something about that question. Um through the spirit this this is this is something that goes back this lesson on that on that custom it goes back very far with me i'll explain i'm gonna tell the story and everything because chief don't man we doing we doing it different right so go ahead yeah you want me to read verse 20 to 21 you give him some context uh, it's a book of uh, acts chapter 16 verse 19 and when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone they called paul and silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs, which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Yeah. Well, the, the customs <coughs> um, that are being taught are our, are the Israelite customs. So you, you have to understand history right when understanding this 
we this this is why Paul was when he got in that situation and he identified himself as a Roman citizen. There's a reason he did that, right? Because the average Jew was not a Roman citizen. The average Jew was never allowed to actually obtain citizenship as a Roman, right? It's kind of like how black and Hispanic people in America were second class citizens. We don't get the same treatments, um, even though they say we're citizens, um, even our Northern Kingdom that are citizens, Benjamites and Levites that are technically citizens, we do not get the same treatment as the true citizens, right, of America, white people. We don't get that, right? So the Jews, our, our, our ancient ancestors in that time period under the Romans, we never had Roman citizenship. We never had Greek citizenship. In order to obtain Roman or Greek citizenship, we had to submit ourselves to the pantheons, the Greco-Roman pantheons, right? Put a one in the chat if you've ever heard of a brother named Ankh that you see on Sonetta TV. He also goes by the name Real Black Atheist. Put a one in the chat if you're familiar with my brother, Real Black Atheist. Right, for a question, because I'm not sitting in front of the computer. So if once I get done with this question, whatever your question is, you're going to want to reiterate it. Do I see Brandon Green knows about, of course, Nakamaya is familiar. Alakwana is not. Akakaya is not. You'll see him, elder brother, dear brother of mine, up there be on side of the TV. He's about a Baltimore. He lives here in the Atlanta area, has a has a bookstore. We got to visit a book. They got a bookstore in um Lithonia. The black dot. Nice, nice, nice setup they got over there. We gotta check out the black dot. Um, but it's a brother by the name of Real Black Atheist, right? And a lot of people, <clears throat> you know, when, when they hear that name, everybody freak out, but he explained that name and what it, it, it mean because the term theist, theos, it comes from the Greek, right? So what you know, he's a um, you know, Afrocentric type of brother. Ankh Ank Kek, of course, and then going to the Egyptian Ankh, but he explained that what he meant by being a real black atheist was that he was denying the Greco-Roman gods. It was a re rebellion against Greco-Roman deities, right? So, in understanding that, when you took that, and we would, as Israelites or Judeans, as they were calling us at that time, the Jews, because we denied the Greco-Roman gods, right? We were not allowed to get citizenship because we were we were essentially looked at as atheists to them because we served our God and not any of theirs. Right? So we didn't get we didn't have citizenship. So when Paul and Barnabas are there, and, and this is a cut to the, the the Christians who are telling you that that Paul and Barnabas, or no, it's Paul and Silas at this time, correct? Silas. So like Bar Paul and Barnabas had split when the previous chapter, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Paul and, and, and Barnabas has, has split. So what happens is, uh, reign supreme, y'all by Shemel Sharbrook, throw out the water. So what happens is this. Um, you have, uh, oh, Salah, this is the point I was making. With the Christians, if Paul in, is not teaching the law, what are these customs that are so drastic? Yeah. I want you to understand that uh, the, the, the worship of Jesus in and of itself, right, as God, the worship of a triune God would not be something that the Greco-Romans would be alarmed by. Yeah, exactly. It would not be something that they would take offense to. It's a new cult, sure, <laughs> right? It's a new cult, sure. But the cults popped up on You had cults to Apollos. All the Greek guys that you could think of, there was cults to, right? Uh, uh, Eros, which who is Arrow? Who can tell me who the, what Eros is more popularly known as? Right? Let me see if somebody can tell me in the chat who Eros is. Luke says shout out to the Texas Range. Hey man, you know. I got I got the T hat on. Thanks a lot. Luke Luke said, love, you said what? Cupid. Yeah, Cupid. Eros is Cupid, right? Somebody said love, which is correct. Eros is Cupid. That's where you get the word arrow from. Cupid shoots the arrows. Eros is his original name for Cupid. Eros. E-R-O-S. Right? Eros meaning sexual love. Exactly. Boom. 
He's got it. Luke got it in the chat. So, but there was cults to all these different deities, and you do whatever you get initiated. You go to the various temples. You worship the pantheon. The introduction of this triune God, right, allegedly that the Christians believe in, would not have been something of an alarming nature to the Greeks, right? Um, especially with the rites or the rituals in which uh, Christianity upholds. That would not, that's reminiscent of everything that they do, right? The concept of a virgin conceiving by a God and creating a half man, half God baby or a fully man, fully God baby, none of that would be a foreign idea to the Greeks. None of that would have been alarming. None of that would have caused an uproar uh, uh, with the Greeks at all. You can look in the Bowers, um, which I got at the house, the Bowers lexicon, which is the most comprehensive New Testament Greek lexicon that they have, right? If you use the blue letter, you have the Thayers through the Strongs. That's okay, but the Bowers is, the scholarship holds the Bowers to the highest degree. I have that at the house, right? Um, and when you look up the entry for Virgin, it literally says that pagan, pagan cultures would not have been this idea of a virgin conceiving by a god is not something foreign to pagan cultures. This would not have been alarming, yeah. right? So if we follow Christian ideology, what's being introduced to the Greco-Roman world through what they would call Christianity is not all that alarming. Mm -hmm. And it's a triune god, allegedly, according to them. So it's still a pantheon. So what's the problem? No, the customs are that of Judea, or the Jewish custom, or the Israelite customs, or the following of the Torah. That's what they already have identified. They already have ostracized. They already have demonized. They already have forbidden. They already label the people who follow them as not citizens, as less than. That is what is such causing such an uproar in Acts 16, right? That right there proves that Christianity is not what Paul and Silas was teaching at all. Proves that these people don't understand Paul, which is why I don't even allow them to go to Paul's epistles when having a conversation with me. You don't get it at all, right? So that's what's going on there. So the customs that are being taught are our customs, right? I want to prove to you with a little bit more evidence that these are our customs. Let's skip two chapters, 17. Isaiah, to Acts 18 and 18. In, in chapter 17, from the top, it, it kind of break it down. Please. Okay, Con, let's hit this. We'll go, we'll go in that too. We're going to delve into everything in the spirit. It's so, a very good question. Go ahead. Yeah, it's a good question for real. It's the book of uh, Acts, chapter 18, verse 18. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while mm -hmm. and then took his leave of the brethren. So now Paul, he was with the brethren, right? In whatever city, what city was this in? Uh, Galileo. Hold up. Yeah. I think he was up in Rome or somewhere up there. Mass uh, he was in Corinth. Corinth? Beautiful. Yeah. Then all the Greeks took sons to see the chief. Yeah. You was in Corinth? Yeah. Okay, Con, go ahead. It says, and Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, mm -hmm. and then took leave of his brethren and got, sailed. Got up out of there, got on a boat, sailed where? And sailed this into Syria. Uh-huh, went to Syria. Go ahead. And with him, Priscilla and Aquila, uh -huh. having shorn his head in Centria. He has shorn his head. He shaved his head. Where? In Centria. Go ahead. For he had a vow. For he had what? A vow. A vow. Right. So that means when he's teaching them customs in Acts 16, he was keeping the Nazarite vow. Yeah. This proves what he was teaching was the law. This proves that he was reintroducing Gentile alienated Israelites back to their culture. You got to see this is the stuff in the spirit of the most high. You got to pay attention to because if you just read next, you might blow smooth past that. Yeah. You got to understand that these books were never in chapters. Right. So you have to understand the flow of this and how this is working. If he's getting in trouble for teaching customs in chapter 16 and in chapter 18, we see him keeping a custom, yeah. right? And we know that custom links directly back to the book of Numbers, the sixth chapter. Yahweh Shai is king, Yahweh Shai, I thought about the water.
We see that, right? We back to the Torah. We can conclude nothing but the customs in which that he was teaching were that of the Torah, were that of the law, which is why there was such a problem because the Greco-Romans had already labeled our customs as wrong. They had demonized them and they label us not citizens. This is a, this is a cold <laughs> cut. He, Paul was not evangelizing people into Christianity. Yeah, He was reintroducing Israelites to people who had lost it let's prove it further let's get um uh uh first was that first corinthians 12 i started 10 and 12 my yacht you how about shimmy i'll shot back and tell the water officer god the book of first corinthians chapter 10 from the top uh-huh it says moreover brethren i would not that ye should be ignorant mm -hmm. how that all our fathers were under the cloud see that i would not that you he's telling these people in corinth he was in Corinth with the Nazarite vow, right? Yeah. He's telling these people in Corinth, do not be ignorant. All our fathers were what? Were under the cloud. Were under the cloud. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so like, I just looked up. Centria is literally the east city closest to Corinth. Right there. So he yeah. was in that area teaching that Bible. Yep. It says, that's like being in Decatur from Atlanta. Exactly. Like, that's exactly what it looks like. Exactly same thing, Come right? Mm -hmm. It says, uh, moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud uh -huh. and all passed through the sea. Right, all passed through the sea. Go ahead. And we're all baptized unto Moses. We're all baptized unto Moses. He's telling these people in Corinth who their foreparents were, the ancient Israelites, the people that were with Moses. He is reintroducing these people to their heritage. It's the same work that we're there. The Christians are not doing Paul the work that Paul did. Right. They're not they're not carrying out the apostolic work. That's something that we are doing when we go tell black and Hispanic people that they are Israelites on the streets. That's what Paul was doing. And Paul got in trouble for that. Right. Worshiping this full man, full God, born of a virgin that these Christians talk about would not be something of alarm to the Greeks. But it's something that's coming out of Judea. That is a Judean custom and that is reintroducing people to Judean customs that is inspiring people to follow the customs of Judea. That is a problem to the Greek Greco-Romans. That's a major problem. Right? Go ahead. Like I got precepts. Go ahead. Uh. It says, and they, what it says, they were under the cloud, right? Mm -hmm. Uh Psalms chapter 105, verse uh 23 and 24, and I'm gonna jump to 39. It says, Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob so joined in the land of Ham. And he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. Just to prove the point that uh, he was talking about Israelites. Verse 39, he spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light in the night. See that? A cloud. Yeah. There was a cloud there. See that? So it can only, it, the father's got to be the Israelites. Got to. Right, go ahead. It says uh, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Mm -hmm. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. The manna that fell from heaven. See that? Now skip to 12. Come on. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it says, ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols. You were Gentiles when you were carried away unto dumb idols. I want to implore everybody, go to the main page. There's a debate I did with G-Con. It's called, Are the Gentiles that Paul went to Israelites? Right. We go. I go deep off into this. Um, and, of course, you could hear what the counter arguments are. That's why it's good to listen to the debates, because you can hear how the counter arguments are, what the counter arguments are, and then how to counter them. Yeah. See what I'm saying? The debates are great to listen to for that. That's a great debate. Um, we go into the New Testament, we go into the Apocrypha, we go into the history, we go into the, <coughs> the history can't be denied. When we go to the history, and I want to big up, I forget what brother gave me this book years ago, but that book, this book has been such a valuable weapon. Yeah. And I'm going to suggest it to everybody. It's called The Hellenistic Civilization and the Jews. The author got a Russian name. Or at least it looked Russian to me. I could be wrong. Maybe it's a Czech name. Maybe it's a Greek name. I don't know. It looked like a goddamn Russian name to me. Either way, that book right there, it 
has the historical sources and the documentation of the diaspora. And it talks about the portion of the diaspora that assimilated. Because a large portion of the diaspora assimilated into the Greco-Roman world. <coughs> right? And there's no real way to uh, keep a census on those who assimilated because, of course, they assimilated. Why? Because they want a citizenship. It's the same as so-called black and Hispanic people. Right? Coming into America want to be a part of the American system and conforming to it as much as possible. Our people will call them sellouts, Uncle Tom's, um, Oreos, right? Uh, wh what else? Uh, the Northern Kingdom got certain phrases they like to put on a, on a, a sellouts too. Uh, believers of the report, Aharon, uh, you know, uh, they got a saying in Mexico called Malanchismo, right, to describe these people. Yeah. You know, you got those of our people that say, hey, listen, um, hey, man, white is right. The way the white man got it set up, that's what we need to do if we expect to prosper. So we are going to be zealous in it. You know, a lot of our people, especially Hispanic brothers, often to them proud boys, stuff like that. People who want to get off and involved into that, those are these type of people. They're, the ancestors of the Gentiles that Paul went to were Israelites that were proud boys, yeah. essentially. Israelites that were just coons, that were sellouts, that were Uncle Toms. That's who the ancestors of the people in which that Paul went to were. Right? Go ahead. It is a book of 1 Maccabees chapter 1 starting at verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. All should be one people. Just like now. Hey, we're all American. Yeah. You hear black people, Hispanic people, Native Indian people say we're all Americans here. We're all one country. What? We've never operated like that. That's not the way of our ancestors. Yeah. Even our more recent ancestors, that's not the way. You go down to ancient to Mexico now, right? And the word Mexico come from Mexica, right? But all people, all the ancient tribes of Mexico did not were not Mexica people. Right. All the ancient people of Mexico were not Aztecs even. They had separate identities, tribal kingdoms, things of that nature. All the Native American tribes, right? Over 900 Native American tribes, right? They weren't all known as one thing. Some of these things are known as confederacy, all these various things. Yeah. So even more recent than West Africa, forget about it. <laughs> right. Various kingdoms there. Right. So everybody wasn't just calling themselves one thing, right? So this idea of everybody being just called one thing, that's foreign to us. That was brought upon by the white man, right? Go ahead. It said that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws. Everyone should leave what? His laws. His laws, meaning whatever your ways are, we're stopping that, Yeah. right? And here's the thing. See, they went down into Egypt, right? If you understand the, the history of the Greeks, <laughs> they was down there in Egypt. There's a city that has an infamous library that has the oldest synagogue in the world in it. It's called Alexandria. What does Alexandria mean? <laughs> that was an ancient comedic pharaoh? No, that come from Alexander the Great, the Macedonian, right. the Edomite, the devil, the creep, right? They spent a lot of time off in that Egypt. They spent a lot of time off in that Syria, right, as well. And what you have to understand is what they were able to do with the, the pagan Syrian pantheon, what they were able to do with the, 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 the both of the Egyptian pantheons, right? Both the uh, Memphite, what's the name of the other pantheon? Hold on, Egyptian pantheon. Because y'all know you had the Memphite Pantheon. It was another Pantheon. Any yet? No. <laughs> from you got the one from Memphis. <laughs> Memphis means white wall. That's crazy. Right? Either way, they had two pantheons. 
But because they had pantheons, what was able to happen was when the Greco-Romans came, when the, when the Greeks first came and then the Romans, they were able to synchronize the pantheons, right? They were able to merge all of this. This is where Catholicism comes from. It's a continuation of the work of the Greeks when the Greeks started going to different lands and started absorbing or merging pantheons, merging gods with other pagans. When they get to us, they can't do that no more. We don't have a pantheon, right? Now, there's times that we have had a pantheon, and the Most High destroyed us for it. But you have to remember, let's turn back the hands of time real quick. Let's go to Ezra 1 and 1. I want y'all to understand something. This is what Chief Dome is about. See this one question? We going all over the place in the spirit of the Most High. Right? This is what Chief Dome is about, man. We not. I'm, it's not, you know structured topic you said what no limitations man we in the spirit you in chief's dome right now you see this it's a rather large dome <laughs> seven and five eighths seven and three fourths and lids just for you to understand <coughs> ain't but two sizes bigger than that seven seven eights and eight right. that's it right and I, I can put an eight on it's a little you know what i mean but i can put the eight on if i need to Go ahead. This is the book of the prophet Ezra, chapter 1, verse 1. Uh -huh. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, uh -huh. that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. Yahweh stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, mm -hmm. that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, Yahweh of heaven have given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he have charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. <clears throat> Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, mm -hmm. and build the house of Yahweh of Israel. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts, besides the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites mm -hmm. with all them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of Yahweh, which is in Jerusalem. That's important, right? So this is what happens. This is coming out of the Babylonian captivity, yeah. right? The medial Persians had conquered Babylon. The Most High was dealing with Cyrus. He let Cyrus know, I'm finna give you this victory. You let my people go. You let my people build a house, restore that house to me that the Babylonians sacked, destroyed, etc. Now, why we went to Babylon was for a few things. We were killing each other. We were enslaving and oppressing each other. And of course, we were committing idolatry. And we can see this, right? In archaeology, you can see that we began to commit idolatry, right? You can look at the archaeological records that we created an idol for the most high. Right. And then we also began to worship deities of our neighbors, the Canaanites, Ashtoreth. Right. How do you worship Ashtoreth? Easter, orgies, strip clubs, prostitution, sacred prostitution. To understand what sacred prostitution is, it's ritualistic <laughs> prostitution. So to, to enter into the cult of Ishtar or Asherah, right, for a woman to be initiate this, this this basically how you get into the cult right you gotta buy some pussy if you're a man if you're a woman to get into the cult you have to sell your pussy at least one time that's how to get into this cult right so what was a big deal give me the groves find me a couple scriptures on the groves then we can understand what's going on here so we were into all kind of idolatry as well as wickedness and evil to each other murdering each other oppressing each other enslaving each other Leading into the Babylonian exile. Right? We're going to get the last straw. That's Jeremiah 34, which is the last straw that led us into Babylon. I had a precept. Too. Right? What you got? Uh, just, uh, Isaiah 45. Go ahead. Yeah, the book of Isaiah, uh, the prophet Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 1. Thus said Yahweh to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, mm -hmm. to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leave gates and the gates shall not be shut. Mm -hmm. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. 
I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. So the Most High made, guided him into an easier victory for him to conquer the kingdoms of the known world at that time for an express purpose. And of course, he gave the prophet <laughs> Daniel these prophecies aforetime, right? Through the image of the, the beast. I mean, th through the image of not the beast, but the statue, right? And then the four beasts, the statue, and then the four beasts. He, he doubled up on Daniel. First, because he gave Nebuchadnezzar the dream of the statue, he let Daniel come in and break that down. Then he gave Daniel the visions of the four beasts, right? So we're coming out of Babylon, right? And we understand through men like Daniel, through men like Ezekiel, through men like Baruch, the <coughs> prophets that the Most High gave us in Babylon, right? Of course, the word of Jeremiah that preceded Babylon, Isaiah that preceded Babylon, etc. Yeah. Um, so through that, we understood that when we get let out, we understood we was getting ready to get out of jail, out of the Babylonian captivity, through the Persians, and we were going to be able to go back home and build the temple. We ought not to fall back into idolatry, right? So we were very stern on the worship of Yahweh after we came out of that exile. Now... There was still some problematic things with certain understandings, but that's not today's topic, right? Maybe we'll get on that today. But we came out of the Babylon Babylonian captivity with a, with a with a singleness of mind that we have to serve the Most High. We can't keep playing with these other deities, so we were very strict to that, right? So now, when we get to the Greco coming in with the Greeks coming in. Right, what we're doing here, and and our pi piety to keeping the commandments of the Most High, to worshiping the Most High, Achad Yahweh Achad or Yahweh alone, right? With us doing that, it was so contrary to the pantheon of the Greeks that it was not adaptable, right? It's like if you take your plug in, your your wall plug in, right, your three prong wall plug in, and you go to Europe. You take the American, when you try to plug it into Europe, it's not going to work. It doesn't work over there. So our system, it just didn't adapt. It didn't plug in with theirs. But the Egyptians did. But the Syrians did. The other places they went, it was working because they have this pantheon. Well, we have put away a pantheon. We had adapted the pantheon for a time. But we had put away a pantheon. Right? So we just worshiped Yahweh Chud our true nature of what we would call uh, monolatrism, right? Not to be confused with monotheism or henotheism, but monolatrism. We're practicing monolatrism and only bowing, only serving, right? When we do with latry, go back to the Greek latreia, which means serve, monolatrism, the service of one. Who is the one? Yahweh, right? Yahweh, our power, Yahweh is one or achad in the Hebrew. We serve in him and him alone, right? That's not adaptable to the Greeks. And it and because it's monolatrism, it's not heno, it's not polytheism, it's monolatrism. We don't, we're not serving your God or any of your gods. We're not compromising with we're gonna serve our God and y'all gods. We're only serving it how that didn't work for them. So that caused problems. Right. They came against us. So they outlawed us and they didn't. The only way you you as a Jew can obtain Greek citizenship for the most part. See, in the case of Paul, it's different because he's from Tarshish. He's not from Judea. It's different. Right. It's like. um, It's hard to even compare it to something in modern time, truthfully. Because the way they do it now, they just give everybody citizenship if you're born, whatever, right? So Paul had it because of where he was born, Tarsus. But if you were from Judea, you did not have that, right? You didn't. You weren't born with that. And they disdained, they despised our culture, our custom. The same way the Egyptians did. They looked at us as abominable. The Greeks too. So what Paul and Silas are teaching is our customs, right? They're teaching people to keep the commandments of the most high, to follow this. And again, to prove it, we showed the vow in which Paul was keeping 
corresponded right back to Numbers, the sixth chapter. He was showing them the law. There's no disputation about that. They can try, but explain to me why he had to cut his hair for a vow. <laughs> if he wasn't keeping something that's found in the Torah, if the Torah was not the customs that he was teaching, that was so offensive. I want you to understand drinking wine and eating bread for a half man, half God born of a virgin man. That's not something that's going to alarm the Greeks. That's something that's going to intrigue the Greeks. But keeping the Passover, that's going to alarm the Greeks. Right? Acknowledging a Messiah that's the chosen of the Most High God, the anointed of the Most High God, that's coming for the liberation of the people of the Most High God. Now, that's going to raise eyebrows. But Christianity is right up the alley of the Greeks and the Romans. There's nothing for them to be so vehemently opposed to about Christianity at all. So the 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 what's starting a riot <laughs> amongst the Greco Romans is the teaching, the forwarding of these Judean customs, which they have grown to hate, which they have been taught are so contrary to theirs, are so different from theirs. Right? Go ahead. You want me to gross? Give me the gross. <clears throat> yeah, this is the book of uh, Judges, chapter three, verse seven. It says, "And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahweh." And forgot Yahweh their God. Give me something later. Okay, you want me to just something close to the Babylon. The kings. Second yeah, kings. Kings. Oh, second Kings. Exactly. Yeah, this is a book of Second Kings, chapter 18. Well, I'm gonna start at verse 17, verse 10. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. Right? So they were setting it up. It said, where read it again? It says, and they set them up images and groves in every high hill uh -huh. and under every green tree. Everywhere. Oh, shit. There was a strip club everywhere in ancient Israel. And the Most High was upset about that, obviously, because it is idolatry. It is a very specific idolatrous ritual. This goes back to like all these idiots who ran with, oh, Sakari was in the strip. First off, you don't even understand how heinous of a false witness that is. Yeah. Of course, we were not one. But two, you're saying that we all were committing a mass idolatrous ritual we were we broke the first commandment is what you were saying right um when you, when you <coughs> misidentified the location in which we were um it's horrible right but this was a thing that was going on prior to the babylonian captivity so this contributed to the reasoning as to why we went into the babylonian captivity right that was a main contributor of course idolatry coupled that with again uh, us oppressing each other, all those various things. And then that's what led to us going into the Babylonian captivity. So when we got out of it, we stayed away from it for a long time. Um, not that we didn't go off in other ways, but we stayed away from idolatry. Give me Ezekiel 9. Are you the heat on? Yeah, yeah, cut, cut that more off. The water. You're not. Right. We get uh, Ezekiel 9. From the top. It's the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse 1. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over so like it, eight. That's what I want. Eight from the top. Time. The prophet Ezekiel, chapter 8, verse 1. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, mm -hmm. that the hand of Yahweh fell there upon me. Mm -hmm. Then I beheld and lo a likeness as the appearance of fire. Mm -hmm. From the appearance of his loins, even downward, fire. Mm -hmm. And from so, his loins. So now Ezekiel is being showed. You know, when you read the prophet Ezekiel, it's a very interesting book in the way the Most High is dealing with Ezekiel. He's got him doing different things. He's taking them places, he's giving them visions, he's having them do things like we've seen Ezekiel for with the G.I. Joes, essentially. Um, so Ezekiel is having a very interesting experience with the Most High, right? Now, mind you, he's at his crib, and now here are the elders of Judah are there at his crib. And when they say the elders of Judah, they're talking about Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. The elders are present before him. But here's what you have to understand. If you go back to Ezekiel 1 and 1, Ezekiel's journey starts as a captive in Babylon. So he's in Babylon, right? He's in captivity. He's not back home. 
Now watch what happens. Go ahead. It says, then I beheld and lo, a likeness is the appearance of fire mm -hmm. from the appearance of his loins, even downward mm -hmm. fire. And from his loins, even upward as the appearance of brightness mm -hmm. as the color of amber. Uh -huh. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by a lock of mine head. Mm -hmm. And the spirit took him when you look at that word lock, it means a, a braid. Mm -hmm. So Ezekiel had braids. He took him by the braids. Go ahead. It says, and took me by a lock of mine head. And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven. Mm -hmm. Picked his ass up. Right. Go ahead. And brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem. Right. Br brought me in what? In the visions of God to Jerusalem. It's a vision. He's seeing a vision. <clears throat> okay. He's not literally in Jerusalem. Right. He's seeing a vision. Essentially, I'm going to explain something to you. What Ezekiel's going through, Christmas is coming up. We know that's a pagan holiday, whatever. But you watch a, 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 a movie. There's a popular Christmas movie by Ebenezer Scrooge. Remember the ghost of Christmas past? Yeah. God. Right? This says what's going on with Ezekiel right now. The vision that he's getting from the Most High is of the past. He's brought to Jerusalem in the in a vision. Right? In the past. Let's read about it. Go ahead. Come on. It says, uh, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem to the door of the inner gate mm -hmm. that looks toward the north, mm -hmm. where was the seat of the image of jealousy, mm -hmm. which provokes to jealousy. Right. The image of jealousy, which provokes jealousy. He saw an idol. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Mm hmm. <clears throat> then said he unto me, son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. Mm -hmm. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. So he's showing that the priest had an <laughs> idol on the altar. Yeah. So what he's showing is this is the reason why we're here. You're in Babylon because of this. Right. Go ahead. It says. uh so I lifted up my eyes the way so like to somebody said Ezekiel seen a UFO. No, Ezekiel did not see UFOs in Ezekiel one. Ezekiel saw visions of prophets. Yeah. All of those visions symbolized the four major prophets, which were himself, Jeremiah, Daniel, Isaiah. That's who he saw. Yeah. That's that's what Ezekiel one is about. It's not about UFOs. Right. We got a breakdown on that. Right. Go ahead. Come on. It says, so I lifted up my eyes the way toward the north. And behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. Uh -huh. So, so boom, he look at the, the, the temple and on that altar, on that brazen altar, here we have an idol. Go ahead. He said, furthermore unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do? He Even. said, look, look what they was doing. You wonder why I brought y'all into this Babylonian captivity? Look at what the priests were doing. Go ahead. He said, furthermore unto me, son of man, Seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel commits here, mm -hmm. that I should uh, go far off from my sanctuary. But turn ye, so like, but turn thee yet again, and thou <laughs> shalt see greater abominations. It's worse. He said it's worse. I got something worse for you. Go ahead. It says, but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. Uh -huh. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I look, behold, a hole in the wall. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a hole in the wall. This is so deep. I, I, want, I hope all of y'all see. Listen, I'm telling you, I was in Vegas this past weekend. All praise to the most high for that powerful Vegas trip. And, you know, we went by something called the sphere in Vegas. And the sphere is an amazing place in Vegas. And they, yeah. they, have, they have what's called, you know, inside the sphere, they do something called immersive experiences. I want to do a Bible. <laughs> I want to find out how to do an immersive experience. And I wanted to take people there where they in there you just see this hole in the wall. Because this is really a movie that, that Ezekiel is being taken through. There's a hole in the wall. Most high gonna say, Ezekiel, I'm gonna put you in this hole real quick. Go ahead. Yeah, and he brought me to the door of the court. And when I look, behold, a hole in the wall. Uh -huh. Then now then mind you, when this was happening, there wasn't no hole in the wall. This is an amazing vision the most high is taking it through, right? Go ahead. Then said he unto me, son of man, dig now in the wall. Dig through that wall like it's prison break. Like it's the goddamn Shawshank Redemption. Dig in the wall. Go ahead. It says dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, 
behold a door. Uh-huh. Oh, there's a door. Go ahead. And he said unto me, go in and behold the wicked abomination that they do here. Go look what's going on in that door. Go ahead. So I went in and saw and behold every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel. Niggas had hella idols. <laughs> right? Okay. All the idols of the house of Israel, meaning in the Judea, worshiping just like they was in the northern kingdom in all idolatry, all manners of evil and wickedness and idolatry. Right? Right? The Levites now. Go ahead. It says, so I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, mm -hmm. and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel. Hold on, Salakia. <clears throat> brother, again, Michael X, do Ezekiel's will. I just told you what that was, brother. It was not a UFO. We have in-depth videos on that. It was not a UFO that Ezekiel saw. There's plenty of scriptures that reference UFOs. Ezekiel 1, contrary to popular belief, is not one of them at all ezekiel one is a vision to ezekiel about the four great prophets which would include him right one like unto a man that's him ezekiel's called a son of man i think like 200 times in the book of ezekiel one like unto a man that's him one like unto a calf that's jeremiah because he's young right um one like unto a lion that's daniel what was the fourth one like unto an eagle? That's Isaiah. And there's precepts in all of their books that give you the indications of who they are. It's about the four major prophets. Right? Let's go. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, an abominable beast, and all the idols of the house of Israel. Uh -huh. All the idols of the house of Israel. Go ahead. Portrayed upon the wall round about. Mm -hmm. And there stood before them 70 men. Mm hmm of the ancients of the house of Israel. See that? Ancients, elders were there. Go ahead. And in the midst of them stood Jaazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand. Mm, every man had a censer. <clears throat> and what were they doing? And a thick cloud of incense went up. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in so, the dark? See that? In the dark. Sheesh. They were worshiping, they were burning incense, they were worshiping all forms of idols, of all creeping things. Yeah. Now think about this, all creeping things. And abominable beasts. And abominable beasts. What does this come from? They was following Egypt. Yeah. Egypt worshiped what the scarab beetle. First thing I thought about was that beetle. That bro. beetle. Yeah. Right? You go back, King Hezekiah, he had, you can look this up in the archaeology, he had league with Egypt. He had the the, the coins in Jerusalem had the onk on it. We was collaborating with the people over there. And when you do this, see, years ago, I talked about a brother, Anka Kek. Years ago, I, he used to have, they used to have, um, what what was they stuff called? They had a group, uh, the Amara Squad. The Amara Squad. He used to do Amara Squad where y'all come on there. See, it, certain Israelites get mad, Christians get mad, because me and Ankh, I don't, me and Ankh don't go against each other, right? Um we be on there banging on niggas together, right? And it would it would fuck people's mind up how this is working, right? It was it, it destroy people. So me and Aunt would go on there, and and you know somebody tried to deny what they were. Uh, uh, he said something about the ancient Israelite mystery system, and uh, you know you had different dude like Israel doctrine, and they would oh there wasn't no mystery system. I said what wasn't no mystery system. Let's go to Ezekiel 8. Yes, there was a mystery system in ancient Israel. It wasn't right. That's not the one God gave us, but we practice it. It's just like if somebody said, well, the ancient Israelites were matrilineal. No, we're not, but we can see Israelites practicing a matrilineal inheritance or matrilineal surnames, nomenclature, things like that. Why? If we go to Ezra, remember those priests that came, but they was called by their mama name, Gileadite, right? Um, and there's another instance as well. I'm thinking about taking on the uh, languages, and stuff. languages, and languages. So it, yeah. this isn't what God gave us. That's not our ancient code, but it happened though, right? So it, just like somebody said, oh, uh, many people used to come on our common board and say the Aztecs can't be Israelites. They worship the sun. The Israelites worship the sun. It's not what God gave us. It's not our true heritage and culture, but it's in our history. Right. So you can't discount it because it certainly happened and it's documented scripturally. So, yes, there was a mystery system. 
and it was spooky all right it was, that was scary hours what evil things that these men had going the ancients of israel had going on in the dark right go ahead ezekiel chapter 8 uh verse 12 it says then said he unto me son of man has thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Have thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Read on. Every man in the chambers of his imagery, for they say, the Lord seeth us not. Mm. The Lord they hath felt forsaken like, the earth. They felt like the Most High had abandoned the earth, and he wasn't paying any attention to what they were doing. Somebody says, um, why did they keep dealing with idols? Well, it's actually very simple. The scriptures tell us that the creature us is subject to vanity we're subject to vain things right and the problem with our god versus everybody else's god is he don't have an idol people want to see it right that's why people got all them candles caesar bozier caesar everywhere people want to see their god right people love to see their god and be able to feel like this statue has power it's like you know a sister you know I used to deal with um um who wasn't in the truth was learning about it through just being around and when she was first seen as easy she asked oh those give you protection no <laughs> these are not magical ornaments <laughs> right they do give us protection in the sense that through keeping the commandments the most high sense angels to encamp around about us yeah. but they themselves right. do not obtain any mystical power yeah. right um, a mezuzah in your house does not retain any mystical power, right. right? But through following the commandments, in a way you get mystical power because the Most High, he sends the angels to encamp round about you, but those objects themselves are not where the power lies, right? But in every other culture in the world, that's what they think. That's how they operate. Um, you got people who wear rosaries and think the rosary is going to save them um, or protect them across, you know, in, in Christianity, we see, especially amongst black and Hispanic people, we have such this zeal for, for, for objects. That's a part of the vanity that our flesh is subject to. This is why our people kept finding themselves in idolatry. If you notice going all the way back to Samuel, right? When Israel asks for a King, what is the reasoning for asking for a King? We say, we want to be like the nations. We want to be like everybody else, right? The king is one thing, but an idol is another. So the Most High gave us a king, and before we ever asked for a king, he already gave us commandments for the king that he knew we were going to ask for, right through the Spirit. He already knew they're going to ask for a king. Deuteronomy 17, here are the guidelines for the king, right? So, but the, the creature is subject to vanity, that's why we constantly went back to idolatry. That's why under the new covenant, we won't have to worry about that because all of those infirmities that come with this flesh are going to be removed from the nation of Israel. Right? Go ahead. And Salak, also, yeah. uh, we got to remember that we were being influenced uh, uh, by the, the cultures nations. and nations around us. Mm -hmm. They were snares and traps to us. So they yeah. idols and stuff like that where they, the most I literally use their idols to be a snare in the trap to, 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 to entice us. Yeah. We're going to Egypt and you see what Egypt, our, you see how enthralled our people are in, with ancient Egypt. Our people think ancient Egypt is there. I want to give a shout out Garfield, of course, Garfield. And if y'all watched flux Friday this week, um, where I talked about what Garfield, how Garfield beat up on the comedic brother so bad. Yeah. I'm sorry. He was beating up, smashing up, coming in there. My brother, Jonathan rap guy, he came in there. Oh my God. You know, all these things happen, right? Cool. So, uh, but our people are Egyptomaniacs. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. imagine then when we saw Egypt in its glory. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. I can see it. <laughs> so, in understanding that, we went over there, we saw Egypt in its glory, and we just said, wow. Why, we're not like that. Mm -hmm. Right? We're not like that. Um, You see how the Canaanites are. Went into Babylon, I saw how the Babylonians are yeah. with those men. That ice tar gate, wow! Look at that gate. Look at the blue and the gold and the and the creatures that's carved in there. And yeah. you know the 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 the, the, the uh, uh uh you know Murduk and all that guy. How the god is half snake, half man, nigga. Yeah. He's hunting. He's catching. You know the griffin and yeah. all those various things. Right. That was 
uh, you know, enticing to us. Right. We like that imagery. We we want. Well, why don't we have that? Yeah. Why don't we have just huge statues of niggas and niggas and mythical creatures everywhere? Right. Most I told us not to operate like that. Yeah. So we got caught up in the vanity of all that. Mm-hmm. Right. And 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 to this day we still are mm-hmm. caught up in the vanity of all of those things. Right. Um. The the work of men's hands. The creature is subject to vanity. That's why. Go ahead. Yeah, Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 13. He said also unto me, turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. It gets worse. So first we see that all of Israel is doing something at the altar. Then we see what the elders are doing. Every four-footed beast creeping thing, they're worshiping. Right? Where they get that from? They got that up out of Egypt. Right, go ahead. It says, turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abomination. I got worse for you. Go ahead. That they do. Mm-hmm. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of Yahweh's house. Now he's at the temple. He's at the door of the gate. He's at the temple. Go ahead. <clears throat> then he brought me to the door of the gate of Yahweh's house, which was toward the north. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. See that? Now he's at the gate of the temple. They're weeping for Tammuz at the Most High's temple. They're weeping for Tammuz, right? And our people still weep for Tammuz every year. Yeah. What is weeping for Tammuz is called the Lenten season in Catholicism, right? When I was coming up as a kid in Catholicism, this is what they used to tell me. And during this time, for 40 days, you have to give something up. That's called weeping for Tammuz. You give something up for 40 days until Easter. What happens Easter? Tammuz comes back alive. Yeah. That's called the uh, uh the the what is it called the the, the spring equinox, yeah. right? The sun come back to life, yeah. right? Nigga die, nigga come back to life. Weeping for Tammuz, right? Go ahead, go so like it. fish on Fridays. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, on, on Friday, who coming there? Is a car coming in there on Friday? <laughs> you got the Ju- Judites, this Catholics. God, they had to be because that's a Catholic thing. But on, on that Friday, see, my grandma she used to put in that, or she wanted that fillet of fish from the, out that McDonald's on a Friday. Everybody eating that, and then, and then a lot of McDonald's would be in. They will had that special on Friday yeah. f- f- to cater to that, yeah. right? Um, so yeah, so that, that Friday you would eat fish because you really supposed to give up meat. Yeah. Then they say no, you only giving up meat on Friday, yeah. and you but you eating fish, which is still, which is still meat, right? Uh, it's funny how people do that, right? You got the pescatarians, things like that. That's still a creature that got killed for you in order to eat, but. That that's where that go into Lent, that Lenten season. Or oh, like you said, Fridays is getting crazy. Yeah, they getting fish. They come in. These are church people. They're getting fish because that's a part of the the ritual of 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 weeping for Tammuz, right? Go ahead. It says, uh, "Then he brought me to the door of the gate of Yahweh's house, mm-hmm. which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz." Read on. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. So he he keep leveling him up. First, we have an idol on an altar. Then we have the ancient, the elders worshiping every manner of four-footed beast creeping thing. Then we have women weeping for Tammuz at the temple, at the gate of the temple. It gets worse, read. And thou shalt see greater abominations than these. Mm-hmm. And he brought me into the inner court of Yahweh's house. Now we're inside the temple. We're in Yahweh's house. The inner court. Right? Who's in the inner court? Only the priests. The rest of y'all can't come in there. Right? Read. And he brought me into the inner court of Yahweh's house. Mm-hmm. And behold, at the door of the temple of, of Yahweh, between the porch and the altar right were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of Yahweh. Mm-hmm. Backs toward the temple. They're turning their back on the Lord. Understand that their backs are toward the temple. So where are they facing now? 
They're not facing. They're facing west. Their back is toward the temple. They're facing west. Go ahead. It says, and their faces toward the east. No, it's like toward the east. My fault. Go ahead. It says, with their backs toward the temple of uh-huh. Yahweh, and their faces toward the east, uh-huh. and they worship the sun toward the east. They worship the what? The sun toward the east. They worship the sun toward the east. So when you get the Muslims, right, your modern day Muslims, and they say they're worshiping towards Mecca. Right. First, it was first Jerusalem. Right, I want to make that clear, allegedly. But it was never because they pray five times a day in accordance with the movements of the sun. Right. So what they're act they're not praying towards Mecca. They're praying towards the sun and they're worshiping the sun in its different various places as it as it moves throughout the sky. Yeah. Right. That but that's what the ancient Israelites were doing. What a, a, a thousand years before there was a Muslim. I want I want to put that on the table as well. A thousand years before there was a Muslim, that ritual existed and God hated it. Right? Go ahead. It says with their backs toward the temple of Yahweh and their faces toward the east, mm-hmm. and they worship the sun toward the east. Uh-huh. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah? That they commit the abominations which they commit here? Mm-hmm. For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. Read on. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Mm -hmm. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. So this is to lay the foundation of this is what got us sent into ancient Babylon. Yeah. All of that practice, right? So again, when we come out of ancient Babylon, through the leadership of uh, High Priest Joshua, the leadership of uh, Zerubbabel, the governor, the leadership of Ezra and Nehemiah, through their leadership, we were far from idolatry when we come out of Babylon. So again, when we encounter the Greeks, let's go back to that Maccabees. When we encounter the Greeks, man, we like, hell no. Nah. They can't adapt to what we have going on. So what they have to bring in is oppression. Right. And through that fear, that fear is what compels men. Right. Who has the seat? It's all about power. Right. Like the damn TV show. Right. The TV show teach you that. It's all about power. A five letter. We say we say here in the Sakari that you have acquired a five letter word. Yeah. That's called power. Right. It's all about power. That's why the scriptures say, my people will be willing in the day of my power, right? Um, Right now, the so-called white man, Esau, is in power. So the majority of the world is, um, you know, in alignment with Esau's ways. They have conformed to Esau's standards because he's in power, right? So many of our people heart this is what it's talk about the heart and the circumcision of the heart and these various things because many of our people especially in those times they only were conformed to the law not because they were zealous for the service of yahweh not because they love yahweh but because that was the law in order that was established yeah. when a foreign or contrary law and order came in they conformed to that yeah. a lot of that has to do with cowardice right fear Hey, I'm going to just do whatever everyone else is doing. That's their idea. Whatever everybody else is doing, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Right? It's like when that goddamn, um, when when uh, this nigga Lil Wayne popped out with the lip ring. Yeah. Everybody just got the lip ring. I knew it. As soon as I see him, I said, oh, God, here yeah, it comes. And the face tag. Everybody's going to have the lip ring. Now, everybody had the face tag. Everybody just did it. Yeah. Everybody just ran out and did it. Yeah. Well, because that's what's going on now. So when the Greeks came and they had that power and they said, hey, look, Judea, we can't merge with y'all like we merge with everybody else. Yeah. So y'all just going to have to get down and lay down. A lot of niggas just were quick to get down. Yeah. Right? Go ahead. Yeah, this is the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 41. <clears throat> Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his, pe- to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. All the heathen agreed. They got down. 
Right, go ahead. Yea, many also of the Israelites. To many of our people, go ahead. Consented to his religion. They got down with that too. Right, go ahead. It says many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols uh -huh. and profaned the Sabbath. For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they shall follow the strange laws of the land mm -hmm. and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and, dr and drink offerings in the temple. All that stuff y'all got going, stop it. Yeah. They attacked our customs there. So this is why Paul was confronted the way he was in Acts 16. Right. Because they hated our worship of Yahweh and they wanted to eradicate it off the face of the planet Earth. And they got many of our people to go along with that. And those people that went along with that, many of them moved into the Greco-Roman world and fully assimilated. Paul went to their offspring generations later, reintroduced them to these very customs, and they were irate about it. Right. That's what's going on in Acts 16. That debunks Christianity. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm mean, this, this yeah, keep going. Good. Yeah, it says, and that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days and pollute the sanctuary and holy people, mm -hmm. set up altars and groves and chapels. Build the damn strip clubs back. Yeah. We ain't got rid of that. Here they coming back. Go ahead. It says, set up altars and groves and chapels of idols mm -hmm. and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. See that? Sacrifice swine's flesh. Right, go ahead. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. Mm -hmm. To the end, they might forget the law. The whole point of this was to make us forget our customs. That was the point. Right, go ahead. It says to the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. Uh, change them. They wanted us to change our laws. That was their goal. Yeah. We want them to change the laws, to make their laws in accordance with ours. We weren't going for that. Most High raised up a group of people called the Maccabees, right? Go ahead. It says, and whosoever Priest. would not do according to the con commandment of the king, mm -hmm. he said he should die. Kill him. Yep. Easy solution. Be an idolater or die. The average motherfucker is going idolatry. I'll take idolatry for 500. Yeah. Right now, because I don't want to die. Right. Mighty men stood up and fought, though. We know about the story of the Maccabees in the book in which he's reading. But many of our people, they got out with it because they didn't want to die. They loved their life. Like, hey, what was Dre uh, emphasized the last week? Yeah. They loved not their life even unto death. Right. That's who's going to get a crown of life. Those who love not their life even unto death. Right. right? Go ahead. In the self-same manner wrote he to his whole kingdom. And appointed overseers over all the people. Uh -huh, they put he put people in power and in place to ensure that everybody was going to assimilate into the Greek culture. Right. Go ahead. Commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice uh -huh. city by city. Then many of the people were gathered unto them. So they went city by they they had to make sure that this happened. Right. They know how crafty we could have been. Yeah. Oh yeah, we know we gonna get down with that for sure, for sure, my nigga. Yeah. All right, cool. We ain't listen to that BF. Yeah. No, nah, they went city by city, and they made sure. See, this this is buck breaking. Yeah, they were buck breaking. Yeah. city by city, right. they buck broke Jews. Go ahead. It says commanded the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. Then many of the people were gathered unto them to wit everyone that forsook the law, and so they committed many, evils. Many in the people. Land. Many of our people forsook the law. Many yeah. of our people, they got down with that sacrifice because they didn't want to die. Right? Go ahead. It says, and so they committed evils in the land mm -hmm. and drove the Israelites into secret places, even wheresoever they could flee to succor. So some of our people, they said, no, nah, we ain't getting down with that. They went and ran up in the caves. Right? Go ahead. Hey, they sit on that. Unless you want to keep going. Uh, they go back to uh, First Corinthians 12. Well, get for me when they come in mode. Okay. Uh, uh and, and deal with Matthias. Well, Matthias, how Matthias got down on him. Line of Judah says, so let me ask this going to the strip club and say, most certainly.
Yeah, the book of uh, First Maccabees chapter 2 uh, from the top. In those days arose Mattathias, the son of John, mm -hmm. the son of Simeon, a priest of the sons of Joarib, from Jerusalem and dwelt in Modin. And he had five sons, Joanon, called Cadiz, Simon, called the Sik, the Sai, Judas, who was called Maccabeus, Eleazar, called Avaron, and Jonathan, whose surname was Aphus. Mm -hmm. And when he saw the blasphemies that were committed in Judah and Jerusalem, he said, Woe is me. Wherefore was I born to see this misery of my people? Matthias was upset about this. He saw what was going on. And, um, you know, he was destroyed. Right? Go ahead. It says, Wherefore was I born to see this misery of my people and of the holy city and to dwell there? When it was delivered into the hand of the enemy and the sanctuary into the hand of strangers, her temple is become as a man without glory. Mm -hmm. Her glorious vessels are carried away into captivity. Her infants are slain in the streets. Her young men with the sword of the enemy. What nation has not had a part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoils? Mm -hmm. All her ornaments are taken away of a free woman. She has become a bond slave. Mm -hmm. And behold, our sanctuary, even our beauty and our glory. So like your uh, ghost in the shell, Yahweh Bashami, I'll shout break it water, water. Go ahead. It says, and behold, our sanctuary, even our beauty and our glory is laid waste and the Gentiles have profaned it. Uh -huh. To what end, therefore, shall we live any longer? Then Mattathias and his sons rent their clothes and put on sackcloth and mourn very sore. Uh -huh. In the meanwhile, the king's officers, such as compelled the people to revolt, came into the city Modin to make them sacrifice. So here they come. They're going city by city. They yeah. now have come into Modin. Modin is where Matthias and his five mighty sons live, yeah. right? These are called the Hasmonians <clears throat> or the Maccabees, right? The Maccabees come from Judah's nickname. Judas or Judah was nicknamed Maccabee. Maccabee mean the hammer. Because yeah. he brought the hammer down on the heathen. That's, right. that's where he got that nickname from. So that's where the Maccabees, that term comes from. But they call themselves the Hasmonians or the Hasmonian dynasty based off of one of their ancestors. Right. Right. Go ahead. It says, in the meanwhile, the king's officers, such as compelled the people to revolt, came into the city Modin to make them sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And when many of Israel came unto them, Mattathias also and his sons came together. So he popped out. Well, we finna go. Hey, boy, we finna go. Because understand, when, when you read up earlier, what did Matthias say? Hey, why are we? Listen, if Jerusalem is destroyed, why am I even alive? Yeah, exactly. That was his whole mentality. If the temple is stripped and bare, why do I even exist? That's what Matthias' mentality was. So he said, all right, they're going to sacrifice. These niggas showed up. He got his boy. It's time to ride. Right? Go ahead. Con, verse 17. Then answered the king's officers and said to Mattathias on this wise, Thou art a ruler and an honorable and great man in this city, and strengthened with, his, with sons and brethren. Now, therefore, come thou first and fulfill the king's commandment, like as all the heathen have done. Yea, and, all, and the men of Judah also, and such as remain in Jerusalem. So shall you and your house be in the number of the king's friends and you and your children shall be honored with silver and gold and many rewards. Right. Yeah. So, hey, look, you got influence around here. Yeah. We got gifts for you. Right. And with the gifts that we have for you, you know, we can compensate you if you hey, you be the first one to come up here and do this. Right. Go ahead. Right. It says, and you and your children shall be honored with silver and gold uh -huh. and many rewards. Then Mattathias answered and spake with a loud voice, though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him and fall away everyone from the religion of their fathers and give consent to his commandments. Yet will, yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our fathers. Yeah, man. Damn that. We are not getting down with, I don't care if every other Israelite followed you and your greek gods right we are going to serve yahweh period right go ahead verse 21 god forbid that we should forsake the law and the ordinances uh -huh. we will not hearken to the king's words to go from our religion either on the right hand or the left read on now when he had left speaking these words there came one of the jews in the sight of all to sacrifice on the altar which was at Modin, according mm -hmm. to the king's commandment which thing when Mattathias saw, he was inflamed with zeal 
and his reins trembled. Neither could he forbear to show his anger according to judgment. Wherefore he ran and slew him upon the altar. And right. The, so Matthias came. But read that part again. So. Come. Verse 24. Uh when which which the which thing when Matthias saw he was inflamed with zeal and his reins trembled, mm -hmm. neither could he forbear to show his anger according to judgment. So he was so upset seeing an Israelite consent to this. Yeah. Right? He had to get in get active when he saw this, right? Go ahead. It says, Wherefore he ran and slew him upon the altar. He killed him. Yeah. Matthias put that nigga directly to death. <laughs> yeah. Put his ass down. Right? Just it's over with. I'm doing him in now. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's how Matthias is getting down. Yeah. The execution of immediate judgment. Go ahead. Yeah. It says, <laughs> Neither could he forbear to show his anger <laughs> according to judgment. <laughs> <laughs> wherefore he ran and slew him upon the altar uh -huh. also the king's commissioner who compelled men to sacrifice put the greek down go ahead he killed at that time nigga put that nigga down too you can niggas get put down it is what it is go ahead and the altar he pulled down mm -hmm. thus dealt he zealously for the law of god like as phineas did unto zambri the son of so solemn mm -hmm. going back to during the time of the exodus yeah um in the wilderness he brought the Moabite woman. He put he laying shit down. That's what Phineas did, right? Go ahead. And Mattathias cried throughout the, the city with a loud voice, saying, "Whosoever is zealous of the law and maintains the covenant, let him follow me." Yeah, everybody who with it, man, who who's trying to be on point, who's trying to keep the commandments of the Most High, come with me, right? Because we setting it off with the Greeks from henceforth. Yeah. Go ahead. So he and his sons fled into the mountains and left all that ever they had in the city. They left it, forsook it, right? And, you know, I, I've, I've done this lesson, too, and I, Lord willing, be doing it again. I at least like to bring it out once a year, which is called um, the Maccabees Reincarnated. Yeah. Where did they go when they set it off with the Greeks? They went to the mountains. This is important because this is the same thing that the Levites that we did in Haiti. To defeat the so-called Frenchman, we went into the mountains. Yeah. Right? And that's how we got them. So when the declaration, when the Haitian Declaration of Independence was written, the Emperor Dessalines said, right, listen, we'll let anybody that got a problem with us pull up onto the shore and walk through the city. He said, but let them come to the mountains, man. Let them come to that mountain and y'all going to see what's getting ready to happen. Right, so the same form is called fighting in the mountains. I want you to understand something. This is where the term guerrilla warfare comes from. Yeah. Because where do guerrillas live? In the mountains. How do guerrillas fight? Unorthodox. Yeah. They they hide in the covert of trees. They hit you upside the head with rocks. That's how guerrillas fight, right? Other than, of course, the hand to hand, they'll jump out on you. So this style of, of guerrilla warfare is pioneered by the Maccabees that we're reading about right here, yeah. right? And it's carried on, of course, in Haiti, how we operate in Haiti, guerrilla warfare, and then you get guerrilla Hebrew. See how that works? <laughs> That's where that come from. Um, guerrilla warfare. Anybody who saw it come, I'm on my, I'm on my Dave Chappelle. You, you got to see it. You don't see it. It's obvious, but you, for whatever reason, you don't see it coming, right? Uh. But that's where that comes from, right there going back to the Maccabees, yeah. right? And But this is where the Gentiles come from that we see in the New Testament. That's why you need the Apographer to, to, to connect the dot there. Yeah. And some people say, oh, the Apographer, it's not inspired scripture. First off, y'all should have been watching enough Sakari videos to know that they, they're not even allowed to play that game, Yeah. right? But even if you entertain that game, it's not about it being inspired scripture. It's about it being Accuracy. the historical yeah. accounts, the accurate historical accounts of the yeah. of the Israelites. Yeah. And there is no disputation of that. That's right. And this is how the Gentiles in the New Testament exist. <laughs> From this. So this is who Paul and Silas were teaching our customs, were reintroducing to their history the same thing that we do on the streets every week. Right. So the long and short of it is, I. That's the answer to your question. And more precepts, though. Go ahead. I'll, I'll say go back to Acts. Uh-huh. Let's go. Acts 18, 
where we was at. Um, uh, it, it was 18 to 18. 18 yeah. Uh-huh. 18 and 18. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while and then took his leave of the brethren and sailed this into Syria. And with him, Priscilla and Aquila, having shown his head in Centria, <clears throat> for he had a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Showing you that everywhere he was going, he was going into the uh, synagogue. The synagogues. So uh -huh. even though he might be interacting with uh, everyday citizens on the streets mm -hmm. and they were having certain conversations, he couldn't have been teaching them anything contrary to what he was teaching in the synagogue. Yeah, exactly. You see what I'm saying? Showing exactly. you that he was really teaching the, the, the uh, original ways of the Jews. Exactly. What he was... What he was Battling in the synagogues was he was proving Yahweh. So he was he was trying to convert or or make them to come and acknowledge the Messiah in yeah, the synagogue. Exactly. When he when he reasoned in the synagogue, he's like, Look, he fulfilled this prophecy, he fulfilled that prophecy. Right. He for hey, he's telling them, Hey, I didn't want to believe it either. <laughs> right. I had this experience, this happened, that happened. I understand yeah, this scripture. He 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 gave that. That's so that's why the first thing he did was go into the synagogue because going into the synagogue. Half the battle was over because these people already know what's going on. They know the scriptures. So he's able to go into the scripture and show them. Yeah. Now when he goes without, he has to totally re He has to cold introduce people to a whole culture that they've been disconnected from. Yeah, exactly. Right? So, you know, but but he would go into these cities and he would do that first into the synagogue and then go without and deal with the Gentiles. How can, now? now this is easy though. It's the same way how we deal with the Gentiles now. Going to the areas where we know our people are, so-called black people, so-called Hispanic people, and deal with them. There was a way to identify where the Israelites were in those areas, right? Probably through, you know, means of, you know, the hoods of those cities. Paul knew to go into the various marketplaces and you'll be able to catch our people there, right? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, just to prove that he was going in there and trying to reason with them with the scriptures. Uh, Acts chapter 17 <clears throat> Verse one. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis, 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 it's a lot, and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where it was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead. And that this Yahweh Shai, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. Right? It says, what? And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks, a, multi a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. But the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people, right? So you had people who agreed with the breakdowns that Paul had, but then you had the other ones who disagreed, right? The same way they disagreed in Acts 16, right? In verse 21, talking, you know, they, they was like, these are customs that we can't accept being Romans, right? You had people who didn't want to receive it, right? And they would cause uproars and try to, you know, find ways to get to them and kill them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Yeah. I mean that 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 that's what was going on. That was a raw question, though. I'm you know, praising no, you see, you see that how how long we went on that question? Yeah, uh, over an hour, definitely. Yeah, through the spirit and the guys. This is what Chief Dome was about. Jumped up. It's why you better subscribe. Yeah. It's why you better hit the bell. You're not gonna want to miss Chief Dome. Come. We're not we're not coming with you know, the, the um it's gorilla, uh, the structure. It's guerrilla teaching. Yeah, it's guerrilla. Teaching. They're not coming with the structure. I don't have a time limit set. Yeah, nothing. Everything we just going. Um, totally through the spirit right now. Yeah. It, it, it is it is five fifty four in the morning in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. We just going in the spirit right now, right? Fresh off a good solid three four hour nap, yeah. right? That's how I'm living life in, in sets of four hour naps right now. Right. Um, I haven't even got a. I don't know when I got a full night in a while. So like you, but. You know, <laughs> invigorated the spirit. <laughs> well, your brother said blue. I said I asked that at four a.m. Yep, you see that? Powerful. I got a question for you, Chief. Uh, yeah. Well, we're done. We we move on to the next question. Um, brother Kabat passing out a couple of straps for this Chief Dome. Yeah, I'm looking for 
sure. Want yeah. to keep reading it? Uh, See what we ain't doing it anyway. Just keep reading the book of Magdalene. No, nah, let, let, let's uh, let's 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 little wait for this next question. Okay, cool. you know, so we don't get too far off in there. Uh, and also they they removed Mac, the the apocrypha became illegal in Jamaica because of the Maccabean revolt. Yeah, yep. Because of the Maccabean revolt, and that that inspired when you go into the King Tacky's rebellion. And certain of the, the 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 Levites that was in Jamaica, because understand Levi, we was off in Jamaica. We have been amongst all the tribes, right? So we were there in Jamaica. We known as the Maroons, okay, or as we say in the Creole, my wound, my wound, my wound. You see what I'm saying? So uh, we were there, and we lived in Maroon Town. We to this day live in Maroon towns there in Jamaica. God, feel me. So I preach Rama Mob. Yeah, oh yeah, Rama. I got the strap for you for sure. Rama Mob. There go the gun. I'm passing out straight pistols. <laughs> you feel me? Because any niggas ain't got guns up in here. Good. Feel me? Let me get Rock and Wild together. I even a cheat dog. They got a pole. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that nigga need that. <laughs> nigga, nigga need them joints in that cheat dog. Mm -hmm. Right. It's maybe 13. But yeah, what's the uh the questions? Uh so I think I I, I can tell if Kabal was saying he was gonna ask after we're done completely or after we were done talking about that topic. Yeah, no, Kabal, you could shoot now. This is personal. Shout out to my brother out there in the Netherlands. Well yeah, Michael X, those aren't pyramids in the sense of uh like they built in Egypt or Nubia, yeah. Th those aren't. They're not a pyramid. Like they really mean like a a, a monument. Really mean like a monument or like a tower watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nah, for real. Now nah, Maccabees, you know. But yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't literally mean um a pyramid. A pyramid. Nah, it like like headstones, huh? Yeah, like headstone. But he he yeah. got like large headstones large to headstones, yeah. to represent his family. Exactly. Um, Denise, don't no, yeah. This what this is what we doing. Q and A, scary. You see, you notice it ain't got no title. We gonna move in pure in the spirit. <coughs> scary hour. Hit the scary hour. Hit that second orange, the bottom orange one. That was easy. Now, that's the red. You finish second orange, orange. right, boom. Scary hours. Scary hours. <laughs> the, the yellow eyes. You know. Scary hours. How do you discover whether or not which Africans descend from Israelites? You reverse engineer the slave trade. There you go. Some call reverse engineering. You take a look at the tribes in which they were brought in slavery, and those are the ones in which that you connect with Israel. Was the rich man in the parable a uh, Pharisee or Esau? Esau, um, one layer, uh, Herod, but it represented Esau. Herod and his five brothers, um, Esau had six tribes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it represents Esau. It does not represent the Pharisee whatsoever. So, so some people try to say that the uh, rich man represented uh, the aristocracy of Judea. And then... yeah. People yeah. say that. Uh -huh. People say that, and mm -hmm. then they say that the, the the Lazarus represented the the poor, the ones who were without in Judea, and how you know the dynamics are going to change when, uh, you know the uh, the poor end up saved mm -hmm. versus the aristocracy or the leaders, which is like the past and stuff like that. Who now are going to be destroyed in mm -hmm. the kingdom, you know what I mean, or before the kingdom. Well, the like problem with that is the aristocracy is also going to be saved. Exactly. That's you see what I'm saying? Be saved. The, exactly. And that's the problem with some, with, with that idea. Why? Well, let's just use one small example. Joseph of Arimathea. Yeah. That's a part of the aristocracy. Yeah. But he still was a believer. So yeah. the most high showed <clears> us. <throat> yeah, like Caiaphas. You're like Caiaphas. Yeah. That the aristocracy is not just all wrong. Though there's wrong people in the aristocracy, the same way that the poor class is not all right. You see what I'm saying? So that that concept that the rich man is somebody 
there's there's those key indicators there in the Lazarus, yeah. purple, um, right. you know, uh, clothed in purple. It, it also having five brothers. Yeah, <laughs> that's a key indicator. Um, there, go ahead. So it's I, a lot. And they say that it was what it was a, a, a gulf too deep that we will never be. You'll able never to be able to pass. Yeah, no, nah. man, they don't nah. work. But see, a lot of that comes from hatred, right, of your own people. Uh, you know, there's there's Israelites that have pretty much, as for all intents and purposes, fallen out of this truth. Um, maybe they still claim to be essentially, but through the, their hatred for their people, through them saying that they want the two thirds to burn in hell for all eternity. Yeah. Why would you want that for your people? How do you claim to love black and Hispanic people, but want the majority of them to burn in hell forever? That's my question. Right, and I don't. I don't think it begins to make any sense. Somebody says, "Sirach seventeen and five. What are the five operations of the Lord?" Please tell me the five senses. Yeah, five yeah. senses. Yeah, and then it give you two extra ones: the cogitation of the mind uh -huh. and understanding. And because what is that? That's that. That's something that the animals don't have. Yeah, see what I'm saying? What's up? Uh, uh, Acts, get Acts uh, 17 and 23. It says, Kabbalah says, like, that's why if we had nothing but daughters, they have to marry the same tribe. Hold on, hold on. You must have posted something before that. Yeah. Oh, he says, so when dealing with the law of inheritance, do you think the law is in place so when we are regenerated, we come back into the same tribe? Or am I thinking too deep? Well, you're going to come back into the same tribe no matter what during regeneration. Yeah. It's not about regeneration. It's about the land, the most high gave certain tribes specific land. That land is not to be passed around within the tribes. That's what the law of inheritance is about. Go ahead. Yeah, the book of Acts chapter 17, the 23rd verse. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you. No, they they couldn't possibly use this because he's talking to Greeks yeah. who do not know the God of Israel. Yeah, they don't, they don't. So he's playing off the fact that they had an inscription to an unknown God, yeah. and he's saying this is the God y'all didn't know. Yeah. He's playing on them. He's not literally saying that they. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, no, they had they had a, a, a hitch to or a niche to uh, it. at all. Yeah, he's just going. What's the unknown God? Boom. Let's. <laughs> I'm gonna say that one. God. Right. He's well, just I don't know about you. I don't know yeah, about him, yeah. so I'm gonna tell you about him. Yeah, right. That's all that is. Yeah, it was guy. It was guy. He was guy, and he, he the, the, the brother was 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 smart, he, he wise, had wit. He had wit. witty, yeah, really, really. And, and what he did, and he knew how, how to play off. That's why he said, even as some of their own um, what you call it, even as some of their own, what's going on? Chill, will definitely Sakari remnant all day. Some of their own uh, poets say. Yeah. He would play, he would go to a place he's, you have to do that. When you come to Atlanta, you better understand the Atlanta lingo and how to relate to the people of Atlanta, the God. music, the scene. Yeah. There are certain things when you know when you talk to people that's so relatable, it's just going to make them smile and tune in to what you're saying. Yeah. That's that when you are a seasoned uh, teacher in these streets, right. you're going to gain that uh, uh, ability. Yeah. Paul had that ability. God. Yeah, like so like just like the point you just made, like when I was teaching the camp today, a brother had his Frenchie. So when it was in Hebrews 5 and 12 talking about being weaned from the milk, mm -hmm. I was like, see that, that that puppy when it first come out, it can't, it ain't eating no dog food, bro. Uh -huh. it, it solely relies on his mother's milk. Uh -huh. And afterward, after the count, when you get my info, you're like, bro, when you said that about my dog, bro, that really went like that, that really, that really hit me through the spirit. You see what I'm saying? That re yeah. that relatability is key. Yeah. So if you know these niggas are on Mars Hill worshiping an unknown God, right. I'm gonna build on the unknown God. Okay. If I know they like these poets. I'm going to build on these poets. That's what right. Paul showed. So in, in these right. times, do music, do, do whatever is relatable to yeah. the, to your audience. Find out a hobby, anything, anything yeah. you use it. Yep. If somebody let like a hoop. Yeah. Now we're going to talk. We're talking basketball, talk basketball. <laughs> whatever we got to do. Right. That's what we got to do. Hey, become all, all things, things to all men. Now, Isaiah's a dog. <laughs> He's Which you know he's, he's, he he, anyway. he he got a prize puppy yeah, now. Right. Don't get it right. twisted. <laughs> right, right. Cream of the crop, cream de la creme. 
and then APBT, cream of a good blood line. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Luke 8 and 18. Who wrote the Maccabee? We got scribes for that. Okay. Yeah, the book of St. Luke, chapter 8, you said verse 18. Uh-huh. Take heed, therefore, how ye hear. For whosoever has, to him shall be given. And whosoever has not, from him shall be taken even that which he seems to have. Yeah, that, that's a parable, right? Start up. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Uh, the book of uh, St. Luke, chapter 8, starting it. Really, you want to get a whole, the whole... The whole parable? Yeah. Might as well. Huh? Uh-huh. Uh, starting at verse 4. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about a sower went out to sow the seed. This is what we do when we go out to teach the Bible. Yeah. We're throwing seeds. Right? Essentially. Go ahead. And some fell by the wayside, uh -huh. and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Meaning, there's people that walk by us when we're teaching. Yeah. They don't even come, pay any mind to what we're talking about. Right. Right? Go ahead. And some fell upon a rock, uh -huh. and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. <clears throat> some people, they can stop for a second, and then they just keep going. They're interested for like a second, then they just keep going and they never give it any thought again. Go ahead. And some fell among thorns, and mm -hmm. the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Uh, so some <laughs> they wanted to listen, but something distracted them, yeah, and got them away from it, right? Go ahead. And others fell on good ground mm -hmm. and sprang up and bare fruit <coughs> and hundredfold. Some listened, right, and came into this truth. Go ahead. It says, and when he had said these things, he cried. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Mm -hmm. And his disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? Uh -huh. And he said, unto you, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of the Most High. Unto you is given to know the mysteries. Go ahead. But to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, mm -hmm. and hearing they might not understand. Right, so the most, Yahweh Shai is saying here, I'm giving these people parables. Right? So only those who are spiritually inclined can understand what I'm saying. Right. I'm not speaking plainly to these people because they're not all supposed to get it. Right? right? Go ahead. And hearing they might not understand. Read on. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Uh huh. Those by the wayside are they that hear then come of the devil and take away the word out of their hearts, mm -hmm. lest they should believe and be saved. So like your Ratazak, tremendous point, right? We're going to talk about that hell thing in a second, but somebody asked about his hell reel, and Ratazak just made just very simplistic point. He says, I'm just saying, if hell was an actual place, why don't we see his creation in Genesis? It's, we see the heaven Woo. and the earth. <laughs> well, that's a bomb. I don't see anything. <laughs> Hit that blue button. <laughs> Where's hell? Oh Where do we see it created? Where's the create? We see the creation of everything else. Where do we see the creation of hell? Oh, that's a perfect oh head. A head on the eighty-five. See how that worked? <laughs> go, okay. That was good, man. Nah, I ain't go, All right. Man. Hey, man, what did Mike get? Why the simple? Bro. What What did Mike get saying next Friday? You one cold Puerto Rican dude. Yeah, yeah. God, God, God. God. Oh, pray. Go ahead. Right. God, it says uh, that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Mm -hmm. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Right. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then comes the devil and takes away the word out of their hearts, mm -hmm. lest they should believe and be saved. Mm -hmm. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away. Yeah, the moment that the Greeks come and give you another God to worship under threat of, you know, death. Yeah. Hey, you're turning Greek. Right. Right. Go ahead. And that which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. Yeah, this life becomes more important <laughs> than the truth does right. to some people, right? 
Go ahead. It says, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life uh -huh. and bring no fruit to perfection. Read on. But that on the good ground mm -hmm. are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Mm -hmm. No man, when he has lit a uh, slot, lighted a candle, lighted, has lit a candle, covered it <laughs> with a vessel, covers it with a vessel, or puts it under a bed, mm -hmm. but sets it on a candlestick that they which enter in may see the light. And for the record, I don't have the lick. It actually says light it. Neither anything here that shall not be known. Uh, so like for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. Neither anything here that shall not be known and come abroad. Uh -huh. Take heed, therefore, how ye hear. For who for whosoever has to him shall be given, mm -hmm. and whosoever has not from him shall be taken even that which he seems to have. See, so that goes into the beginning of the parable. Yeah. The people who are temporal in this, yeah. what they have because they don't appreciate what they have and they reject it is taken from them and added to him that actually has. This is that spiritual increase that brothers get, which you, what you have your own spiritual increase. And as people fall off, what they seem to have, right. it gets added to the brothers right. who truly are in the spirit. Right. That's how that works. Uh, landing, y'all, by Shemiel, Shah, Barker, throw water, the water to the brother landing. Of course, our, 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 our great, our great friend. Right. All praises, brother Michael. I'm glad this channel popped up for you. Right, I'm glad YouTube is trying to help out the newer, the smaller channels, right? Haiti does not mean the land of hell. No, Haiti goes back to the Arabic word "ait," which means mountain, right? It means a mountain. The white man was calling Haiti hell. That's Hades, though. H a d e s, the Greek, right? Haiti in our language does not even start with H. It's ait. We don't say Haitian. We say Aitian. See how that works. But hell certainly is um poverty. You could you could definitely say hell is poverty. Of a certain go ahead hit that hit it that is precept. Another parable just talking about <clears throat> like you said, that which he has, uh uh, you know, take it and give it to somebody else. Like you were saying, that, Come. that spiritual increase of other people, right? So this is Matthew chapter 25. <clears throat> I guess you start at verse 20. And so he that had received five talents came and brought over five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, Thou delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou has, done, thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things into thou into the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew th thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strewed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. And lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knew that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not strewed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then in my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Watch this. <laughs> therefore, take the talent from him and give it unto him which has 10 talents. Yeah. Take what's yours and give to the person who has the 10 already. Right. So that parable there uh, coincides with the breakdown we gave on that Luke. Yeah. It It'll be taken. Go ahead. Everyone that has shall be given and he shall have abundance. Mm -hmm. But from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he has. Boom. Yeah. See that? So uh, that's the breakdown, brother X. I met my girl before fully being in the truth her dad is filipino her mother is colombian how should i go about it brother's name molly Watt. i'm gonna say r.i.p to my little homie molly Watt, man 
a great, great, great guy. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, it, it you know it just depends, brother. Um, well, it depends. She, how does she treat you? You know, yeah, it depends on what y'all situation is and how that works. Yes, Hades is the Greek god of the underworld. That's not where Hades come from. Right. All right, <coughs> Hades is not at all related. Again, it, it doesn't even actually start with H at all. That's that's the anglicized um. Uh, transliteration. Yeah, the trans. It's a transliteration. Yeah. Denise Jones said, "I never believe in so-called hell, like my family do." Yeah, I never believed in hell either, even in Catholicism. He said, "Is it unlawful?" No, it's not unlawful. Lot. Want to get to Army Seven? Uh no, we ain't gotta get to Army Seven. It's 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 just it's just only certain um Canaanite people we're not allowed to marry, but you know you're good to go. A question: Is it wrong to pray using the transliterated name of Zeus? What meaning Dios? <laughs> uh, <coughs> yes. Do no, wait, 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 wait. Um, I'm trying to see what you mean, like praying in a language where, um, the word for God is actually connected to like an idol, like Zeus. Is that what you mean? Does it say an angel cast Satan into hell? No, there's never, there's never been written in the Bible. Uh yeah, I, I would say not to do that. Um, certainly, don't do that. Pray when you use that use that name, the name of the Most High, God. Yahweh. Um, do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Uh, that's what I would say. Definitely, even if you're praying, if you're praying in English, you're praying in Creole, you're praying in Spanish, minimally invoke the true Hebrew names of the Most High and His Son. Only name we're with, now shall be saved. Exactly. They, they were talking about what uh, death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This ain't nothing about Satan. Right. It said death and hell <coughs> were cast into the lake of fire. So the lake of fire is not hell. Yeah. Then it said the false prophet will be cast, cast there. The yeah. Don't say nothing about Satan. Yeah, but they're not hell. That's where hell went. <laughs> exactly. Hell had to go there. Right. You talking about go to hell, but hell got to go somewhere. Okay. <laughs> we can pick up the whole hell. Question for the chief priest and for his reader. Have you ever heard about the sweat lodge ceremony in Gad? Did you ever want to attend? If you know about it, what's your thoughts on this? I know about the sweat lodge. I've never wanted to attend, um, but I know about uh, the sweat lodge, though. You know, I'm where I'm from in Washington, they do the sweat lodges and, and things like that. I've heard of them, certain Gadites practicing the sweat lodge, being being able to to actually attend and operate a sweat lodge in a penitentiary in California because you have to get religious freedoms. So if they say that's their religion, then they, they had the sweat lodge up in the up in the joint. But I don't really know um the ins and outs of the sweat lodge, no. Yeah, we might could go into that, look into the sweat lodge, and I know that if 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 they got to take psychedelics, it's a problem. I'll tell you that now. They might be on there taking psychedelics, trying to go on different acid trips and and uh, shroom shroom trips, like some passage, yeah, different rituals, rites, <laughs> and uh, they're going up with some shrooms, man. They're getting big now amongst <laughs> our people. They on them goddamn yeah. shrooms. Try to see what type of nigga they gonna be in their future. Yeah, yeah. They try to really use it. Just and then I realizing that they're projecting their own yeah, mind. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, is sleeping with a woman with kids adultery? Not no. Sleeping with a woman who's with somebody. Right. That's got a man is adultery. Right. <laughs> Why I say RP my little homie because I got a little homie named Molly Wap. And he's he dead now. So that's why I said RP, your name reminds me of that's his name from the set, Molly Watt. 
brother. That's all. You know what I mean? So you reminded me of a real right. He used to come by the camp, throw up the set. Akim almost rushing when I had to tell Akim, hold on, man. That's my little homeboy, man. <laughs> you know, RP Molly Wild. We're, we're, uh, uh, Michael X, you can put away your wife if she commits adultery or, you know, some other act of fornication. Consideration that the woman that he, he's more likely talking about with kids is was in the world, and when she comes to the truth, the new creature, all them old bodies, you know, technically, I say they don't count, but they're not counted towards her. You see what I'm saying? Like she's a new creature. That adultery technically isn't adultery no more. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, that would. That would explain his his question. Uh, okay, so so guys don't do drugs. White people do drugs. Yeah, they got they say you got they got fast from drugs for four days. Four day a four day fast from drugs. Okay, but four day sweat lodge. Are Israelite women supposed to wear fringes? <laughs> and if so, is it only fringes? Of men and women are to wear fringes and or zizits. Men. <laughs> And women. Okay, no drugs or alcohol. Okay. Well, I'll praise you. I'm going to look into it. The sweat lodge. Six in the morning, man. A whole lot of police, man. Who got their ass shot right. on the south side? You feel me? You know what I mean? Like, what's that? Wow. So if your wife is from another nation, Hold on, let me, because his heart is getting in the way of me reading the, the bottom question. Let me type something to move this along. I got it now. Okay, Uh, so if your wife is from another nation, is she saved? No, she's not saved through anything. Your wife of another nation can never be saved. Um. Yeah, I wish I did not die for your wife. All right. So, yeah. In the scripture about women being saved through childbearing, I believe is in reference to, um, yeah, no more birth pains in the kingdom. It, it has nothing to do with salvation in that, um, in that sense. But no, yeah. So your 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 heathen woman can never be saved. He said, it's how I earned my, my title as a Dakota War Chief, Tatanka. Right? So they, did, they had a wrestler back in the day, Tatanka. Clan, by participating in sweat lodge ceremony, we pray to Yahweh for all creation. Um, and for our personal request, we bring him. Okay, all praises. Yeah, I definitely want to look deeper off into that. Uh, Brother Luke. My brother Luke, he is a Dakota War Chief. See, I, g give me this shirt. Let me see this shirt. Shout out to my brother Top Cats. God. You know, he gave me this big chief university <laughs> shirt. But, you know, I like to mess with the real chiefs of the Indians, okay? Right. As a chief to a chief. I love my brother Top Cats. I think he's got a dope logo. He's a funny brother, entertaining brother. But I mess with my real Dakota War Chief. All right, just like my chief uh from the uh the 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 uh the Algonquin chief that we encountered. Uh, and I use in that debate is the eternal fire and darkness, what we call hell. It's, it's not eternal in, in that, in the sense that you're thinking, right? But hell is multiple things. Uh, one thing it is, is the grave. Simply a grave is hell where you go and where you die. A low estate is hell. The lake of fire, why hell will be cast into the lake of fire because the lake of fire will be a mass grave. Not just a place where people, it will be on fire forever, right? So it's eternal fire in that instance, but the things that are in it are not just going to be tormented in the flame forever. Like you're not going to be filled with people talking about tormenting souls. No, souls cannot get 
tormented. So is my heathen woman basically a certain, if, if that's what you, she is whatever you want her to be, brother. Just what she's not is saved. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Question, is Satan the devil, Lucifer, and the beast the same? No. Satan is a spiritual entity that is adverse to us, right? The devil is the physical arm of Satan um, or just anybody operating in a certain deceptive manner, which would be under the guise of Satan, right? Lucifer is the king of Babylon, which you could call the devil under the influence of Satan, but not actually Satan. And the beast, well, there's multiple beasts, right? Daniel saw four beasts representing four kingdoms. John the Revelator sees two beasts. One represents the European Union and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. The other represents the United States of America. Who said that? Oh, everything. Right. Everything. Everything is um wrong with them. So let's let's you you know where to go in the Hebrew for that? Are you talking about the locks? Uh or go wrong? go into the law the law of the leper. Yeah, okay. Thirteen, brother. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> The precept about the Most High showing his action through man. Uh, what am I thinking about? Um, Psalms. It's in Psalms. I'll look at that while he grabbed that. Uh, for for that question, though, real quick, we gonna hit that. But for that question, uh, hold on, what was the question exactly? Uh, hold on, who actually? Yeah, I was I can't write all prizes to judgment. Oh, where does this question go? Okay, so just so the most high shows judgment through man. Um, Psalms 76 and 10. Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. The remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. Um, so the wrath of man, how that's the praise of the most high. Um, one more on that. Uh, what's this? It's another one I'm thinking about. In Psalms as well. Um, damn, man. Y'all coming down with something, man? Or your throat's just dry? Because uh, you was just saying that, right? Oh, his that. Okay. I think, man, this mind ain't disinfected. This mind got sick ain't disinfected. Man, wow. This mind finished. Don't need anything, Man, this is victim. Uh, Finish, bro. Where is this verse? <laughs> uh -huh. I'm about to do some trash. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, get your hair braided, cut. <laughs> Man, where is this verse at? A 
about the hair. What are they supposed to do to their hair? Oh, you talking about right there, right there, 45. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Bigger Leviticus. Uh, go ahead, go I ahead. No, you don't. No, nah, I was trying to find this other one. It's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Leviticus chapter 13. Yeah, verse uh, 44. He is a leprous man. He is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. His plague is in his head. Mm hmm. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent and his head bare. Mm -hmm. And he shall put a covering upon his upper lip and shall cry, unclean, unclean. Okay, so click on that that word. I need you to show go, go into that word in the Hebrew for bear. The Sister Speaks show network says if a husband commits adultery, um, what do you mean if a husband commits adultery? No. Because a husband cannot commit adultery against his wife. That is impossible. There is no regulation in the Bible that says a man can commit adultery against his wife. Uh, I'm, I'm going to read uh, verse 45 of NLT right quick. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to show the, uh, the Hebrew. Come. Uh, Leviticus chapter 13 verse 45 in the NLT. Those who suffer from a serious skin disease must tear their clothing and leave their hair uncombed. Leave their hair what? Uncombed. Yeah, so that the only time you're supposed to <laughs> have dreads is if you're a leper yeah. only lepers that's a sign of uncleanness right so people who are not lepers according to the law should not have dreads go ahead yeah it says what is it bear that word for that word is translated bear yeah to let loose ignore let alone so mm -hmm. the, the word for bear right there is para mm -hmm. right um h6544 Para, right? And it says what? To let go, let loose, ignore, let alone. Mm -hmm. To let go, let loose, to let alone, avoid, neglect. Mm -hmm. To neglect the hair. Uh -huh. Loosen the restraint, to cause refrain. Yeah. How do you neglect hair? You don't brush or comb it. Right. If you don't brush or comb your hair, what eventually occurs? Dreads. Mm -hmm. Right? So the locks, when you look up that word for lock um, in the Bible, uh, in the Hebrew, it tells you a braid or a plait. Right. So that's a braid. You don't ignore your hair to have it go in a braid. Somebody got to come and braid it, weave it, right? Uh, a lock <laughs> is something entirely different than that. Yeah, and then it's a lock, if I could. Go ahead. Uh, and then when you when you talk about the whole custom of locks, uh, dreadlocks, as they call them, right? That's actually an ancient uh, Shivite. Mm -hmm. Right, Shaivism custom, right? So the Brahmins in India, right? The Shaivists of the uh, the Shaivist Brahmins, which is the top caste of uh, Shiva worshippers, mm -hmm. right? Those who are devout unto Shiva, right? Those are the only people. When I went to India, those were the only people with dreads. Mm -hmm. So they see me, they look at me like they like they actually fascinated by dreads because it shows a certain level of esteem mm -hmm. in a particular uh, sect of religious worship. Yeah, like you you're supposed to be pious to that deity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, you're, you're showing uh, piety to uh, Shaivism, mm -hmm. right? So those dreads, they actually come from that Indian uh, Shaivism worship. Yeah, so. and, and I'm going to tell you what's cold, even in Rastafari. Yeah. Uh, what you find out in Rastafari, when you go over there to, to Ethiopia, they don't have dreads. Yeah. Only only the, the Benjamites and the adherents on this side of the world have that. And um, Garfield was going into that, how... Uh, that the 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 American forerunner of Rastafarianism that has the American that was the forerunner of the American version that influenced Bob Marley and them, right. he actually went to India and adapted that from those Shavites. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So Whoa. that he adapt he incorporated different things into Rastafarianism yeah. that is not a part of the Cushitic, the actual Ethiopian version of it, and introduced it to America. And I'll guess what else. The we weed worship, about <laughs> come from India. Weed, yeah. That don't cut. That's not our custom. Okay. Dreads and weed that comes from the East Indians, Damn. right? Samson did have locks. Those locks are braids, right? And his wife ain't cut his hair. That hoe cut his hair. Bring it out. All right. His wife left him. Got <laughs> got with his with his homeboy. When you read the history, Samson has one of the coldest stories. Of black exploitation that you've ever heard in your life, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> were Nimrod and Nebuchadnezzar are the same? No. Nimrod and Nebuchadnezzar don't even come from the same stock. No, say that. Nimrod is a Cushite. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar is Shemitic. He Nebuchadnezzar is a Hebrew. Okay, for answering our questions. Got okay, all praises. All praise. Somebody, what, I'll give charity. Oh, okay, hold on. Where the sister at? Because she might have. Okay, no. Nah. She, the sister, sister speak. Show has not came with the clarity on the uh, the adultery. Her husband committed adultery. So I'm looking for that so I can give her an adequate answer to her question. Have you heard about Amalek not authorized to do DNA testing? Oh, uh, I see a bunch of people putting that. I don't. I, I. I don't. I haven't looked into that um, at all. So I don't know. <coughs> you already got that for Kabat about to show show his judgment through the actions of man. You said what? Kabat acts a precept showing that the Most High shows his judgment through the actions of man. Yeah, I have one. It was another one I'm looking for, but that one is good. Yes, Delilah. A whole. A Philistine, not a Palestine, not these people calling themselves Palestinians, a legitimate Philistine or Egyptian prostitute. Uh cut our brother Samson's hair. I got appreciate it. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so all right. 39 and 28. It says, There be spirits that are created for vengeance, mm -hmm. which in their fury lay on sore strokes in the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Mm -hmm. Fire and hail and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword. Punishing the wicked to destruction. The sword. Who has swords? Exactly. Men. Exactly. Right. Uh, the sister speak. You posted it. You then you retracted it. I don't know if you're trying to just get your word correct. I will be patient and bear with you. The sister speak show network. Real Judah, what is the uh, relevance of your comment? I'm a bit confused by it. The Nazarite vow prohibits the cutting of hair, allow your locks to grow. Yeah, so there's somebody that we all know about called Goldilocks. Every strand of your hair is a lock of hair. Right. There's no, like somebody called Dred's locks later in time. A lock in its true initial context is simply a <laughs> strand of hair. So numbers... Um, the sixth chapter is not at all talking about dreads at all. Why do you think our kingdom would, would to me? Uh, we can't even imagine it for real, you know. You, you seen that? Uh, did God make a donkey talk to a blind man? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't believe the man was blind. Yeah. I don't think he was blind. I don't re recollect him being blind. He definitely made a donkey, a donkey talk. talk yeah. Donkey, a donkey did talk yeah. with man's voice. Real Judas says my confusion is evident. Real Judas, speaking with man's voice. I'm gonna tell you what's evident, Real Judah. You can't type in my chat anymore. Right. That's evident. <laughs> Spark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spot. You know, low key Levi, the brother Isaiah. He's he's reading. He had to cut his man. Yeah, he told you he was telling you he went over to India. They like they thought this nigga was a top Shivite. 
a, a bribing <laughs> when they seen the nigga. Kids, kids, no, nah, look, I'm telling you, this they fast. They were just real. <laughs> kids running up to it, going to touch his hair and shit. <laughs> I'm like, man, get back out, eat my hands out, my fucking face. And man. they be having them wrapped up in them damn things, God, don't they? God. Sometimes, sometimes, Other times, them shit just be long as shit, <laughs> like long ass dreads, bro. I'm like, uh-huh. man, this man got hella dreads, making like shit no mind. <laughs> it's over. Elon, people been doing this for a minute. <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> nah, something like that, bro. Something like that. So they came out, just started madding them up, <laughs> putting all shit in there. <laughs> you know they hurt straight as hell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like know. like so like so witness said lock is braid or plait of hair there it's braids for the umpteenth time well we'll only levi's wear a ephod in the kingdom well we only gonna wear the real ephod y'all wear a linen ephod like david wore a linen ephod also i'm a i'm a i'm a burst y'all bubble on something else the menorah is not your symbol how all the tribes just rocking the menorah. That's mine too. What are you doing? <laughs> They're not even yours. You guys are doing tribal appropriation. Right? What you gonna tell me? Well, don't, you, well, you just don't wear the lion then. But see, Israel is likened unto a lion, Ariel. See that? So all the tribes are lions. Everybody ain't a menorah though. Okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, other tribes, you can say other tribes go to E5. Why? Because it represents all the tribes. Okay. But the menorah is ours, okay. not yours. Why okay. So many dreads in the chat, bro. You know, a lot of it's people, a, a they, they became popular, these dreads. They became okay. so popular. <laughs> <laughs> Trans tribal. <lot. laughs> Somebody said, do, do you guys ever sleep? Now I'm starting to think. Y'all AI. We just woke up. Good. All right. But listen, Deacon just debated the AI. He confounded the AI. Good. So we're above AI God is right. in the spirit. A minimal sleep. Man. Yeah, minimal sleep. Hey, listen, I'm looking at Deacon told me about his AI today. I said, man, I'm getting ready to debate AI. Good. See, because AI, they'll let you back into a corner, but AI eventually will concede, unlike you pride. Because AI don't got the pride Good. that your flesh got. Good. Some of y'all. Okay, here we go. Sister Speak Show Network. She got a question together. This heart is in front of it. Can you read it for me, uh, to Zolium? A husband can only put his wife away if she has committed adultery. So if he divorces her and she never committed adultery, is the wife never able to get married? Okay, so to you, you're good. You're good, sister. Um. It's not adultery, it's fornication. So a husband could put his wife away for the cause of fornication. So that's any unlawful sexual activity. It's not limited to adultery, but adultery is typically um, the chief example because that's the main thing that happens. Um, But some wives may not commit it. If If a woman lays with another woman, she has not committed adultery, but she has committed a fornication. She has committed uh, something that is sexually unlawful according to the Torah, right? Uh, if a woman lays with an animal, a, a child, um, or or when you go into Deuteronomy 24, um, when it talks about um, shameful exposure of herself, yeah. right? Meaning if she's sending nude photos, Ooh. she sent a pussy pic to somebody. She didn't lay with that man, but she sent that pussy pic over. She can be divorced for that. So if a husband divorces a woman, right, and he doesn't have cause of fornication, right? Now, when a woman, it's not that you can never marry, but it's when you marry, that man is now counted an adulterer, right? Because essentially, you have been forced into an adulterous situation, but it's his fault because he put you away without proper cause. So now the sin would be on him. Dope. Right? It's a double thing on him. He yeah. put this woman away without cause, and now he's caused her. Yeah. Through that not having cause, he's caused you to do something that you shouldn't do. Yeah. Right? Now, he is an yeah. adulterer yeah. because what he's the situation he's put you in. Yeah. Somebody said, uh, is cooking with and eating cannabis lawful? 
Yes. So I said trans tribalism. <laughs> trans tribal like going from one tribe to another. Like. You know. <laughs> or Eskimos Israel. Yes. You grow out that natural, as they used to call it. Back <laughs> in the day. They just made a good point. Uh, Strobology, Stro Boogie said, Stro I, I miss Joe Smith. So Joe Smith's wife, you know, I, uh, oh, that's a good, she, he has adequate yeah, reasoning. He can leave her you see what I'm saying? because she's, she's selling news on the OnlyFans. So yeah. So if your woman got OnlyFans, you find your woman got OnlyFans, you can get rid of them. Yeah. Straight and power. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's how. That's how. They have a 20, they have an open public 24 seven Jesus AI stream on Twitch called ask Jesus. Yeah, I want to check that out. A 24-7? I want to check that thing out and see what they got Jesus saying. If he's answering according to the Bible or if he's answering according to Christianity. Yeah, right. Yeah, so... That would be an inordinate affection if she's flirting or eyeing another man. Um, yeah, you can say that, but she hasn't fornicated at that point. She's going off, right? But she hasn't fornicated at that point. <coughs> well, it depends on what your skin illness is, Uriel. Hey, Joshua is 646 here in Atlanta, George. All right. But we started, what we started about four or something? Yeah. Through the spirit of the most high. We just going, this is what Chief Dome is all about. And I know you have people going to watch this replay. Be like, God, I missed it. Hey, man, Chief Dome is going to be sporadic. Scary hours. It's scary hours. It's going to be in the spirit. It's going to be sporadic. All right, so you're going to want to get up in here um, and, and get your questions off. And we're going to spend like that first question. That turns into a deep hour breakdown. Uh -huh. In the spirit of the most high. <laughs> yeah, Josh, because you don't know when this is coming. And I'll big up to Joshua Flores, very active in the comments and in the, in the, in the, in the uh, chats. You know, things of that nature. Uh, URAL, uh, they were clarifying that the uh, scalp this is this type of skin issue that they got. Yeah, but what is your skin issue, though? If it's affecting your scalp, what is it? Because leprosy is leprosy is a specific thing. What do you mean? Like you got blonde hair? Shout out to Tyler Pony. Yeah, you know I mean. Yeah, we're gonna force an AI Jesus update. Definitely shout out to Chicago. Most high will we'll be out there next weekend is going down. Uh, Roe the Chef, Humble for Yah album, uh, release party, all right? What's going down? Something very powerful. Enjoy your fishing, Stro Boogie. Yeah, man. And be a fisher of men. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. First and, poor, right? First and <coughs> foremost. Yeah, uh, Kabai said, so what did Paul mean in Colossians 3 and 5? Uh, Colossians, uh, yeah. When I'm coming to Detroit, when it gets warm, go ahead. <laughs> Colossians chapter three, verse five. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Kill your flesh. Go ahead. It says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, mm -hmm. inordinate affection. Mm -hmm. Don't do the things that you're not supposed to do that your flesh wants to do. Kill your flesh and don't allow your flesh to lead you to do these things that the most I said not to do. Right. Go ahead. Inordinate affection. Affections that's out of order. Go ahead. Inordinate affection, evil concupiscence mm -hmm. and covetousness, which mm -hmm. is idolatry. Right. Boom. 
Yeah, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Then you know, uh, uh, inordinate affection has to be something dealing with breaking the law. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Just like all the rest of those. Michael X said, giving money, giving women money to, oh, to sin. Okay. I thought he said, giving women money is a sin. Rama Ma said that Acts underscore Jesus stream is bull BS. Oh, I know it is. <coughs> we might invade it one day on Chief Dome. Gun. You never know. It's Chief Dome, man. We just, we doing all kind of stuff on this channel. I'm here to tell you. You see? You got 144 people in the chat. Hey, that's spiritual. Yeah, hey, man. brother, that's spiritual. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> They got a talking Caesar Bogier in there, <laughs> of course. Oh my God! Shroud of Turin just in there talking to niggas. Why do they keep saying OnlyFans is, is only sins? Yeah, bro, I, I, we get that you're pushing this only <laughs> sins thing, bro. All right. <laughs> they put that in there like thirty times, dog. You know, people got OnlyFans that don't sell anything sexual, yeah, too, right? Yeah, like Gordon Drake. Shout out to the brother. yeah, shout out Gordon Drake. You can join the remnant through yeah. OnlyFans. Get and get the information. <laughs> you need the information. Yeah, Definitely yeah. smash that like button. So hit the bell, all that, because you're going to need to know when these things pop up. So hit the bell. <laughs> it's gorilla time. All right. Oh, gosh, <laughs> like Rogers, I said, we get it. All right. okay. Can you explain it. free will? There's no such thing. Come. Boom. Definitely shout out to all the, the whole <laughs> Texas region. Texas is its own region God. of Sakari. So Dallas, Houston, and now the new frontier through the spirit of the most high, San Antonio, Texas. Remember the Alamo. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Proverbs 16 and 1. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. It's from the Lord. Yeah. The most high. Go ahead, break it down. Yeah, he says, it says what the preparations of the heart in man. So the things that go on in your mind, the way your, your mind is 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 structured, right? And the answer of the tongue, the things you end up speaking are all from the Lord. You have no control over. You may assume you do, but you don't. It's but all from the Lord. You you do not, like Landon said, it's predestined, cuz and he added to Zolium there, because you yeah. know that's what I can say. <coughs> uh Amber Shalom said, Should we be tithing 10%? Yeah, well, that's the principle. Right. There's a principle that we see established in scripture of the giving of 10 percent of increase of revenues. So because of that principle, um, yes, you should. Right. <laughs> if I said, if and even those who received see this, this is also something that's not talked about because um, the priests uh, in ancient times, we would give what's called a tithe of a tithe. So the nation would bring us 10 percent of all of their increase. And then we take 10% of everything that we got um, and we'd offer that, right? So um, that's called a tithe of a tithe. So yes, that principle most certainly should still um, be followed. We see that Yahweh Shah is a priest forever or after the order of Melchizedek. We see that prior to the Levitical priesthood, Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. Um, you know, so we see that that thing in, is a principle practice. Um, so we shouldn't stop keeping it just because, and a lot of our people have a bad taste in their mouth about it because of how the churches have misappropriated funds and abused and robbed our people um, for so long. But truthfully, they don't even get tithes. They get so much more because they all of a sudden, like Asai got the boy, he over here talking about getting such and such seed in your hand, this seed, thousand dollar seed, this, they way going over 10%, man. They robbing grandma. God. They robbing grandma for sure. He said, yo, yo, chief, them Starbucks drinks do be hitting you on or something. You put all pray. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, that's when I when I need some energy, but I don't need too much. When I need a lot. Kiwi guava Celsius. You see? And they goddamn it better cut a check. God. Some energy drink company needs to sponsor <laughs> Chief Dome. God. Only be, Chief Dome needs an official energy drink sponsor. sponsor. Flux Friday. Machete Monday. God damn it. 
We need a sponsor. And Chief don't. I'm the only one who got the motion or something. I got a quarter million accounts reached on Instagram this month. Half a million views. I got half a million views damn near on the main page this month. We got analytics. Cut the check. Hey, Go ahead. I might ask you, have you still been in the gym or not? You know? I ain't been in the gym, huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, this man the counter. We try to get you back in the gym. He going through some things, man, right now. Blame man. this uh nigga right here in the street. <laughs> I ain't been in the gym, huh? Oh, going to his gym. <laughs> uh, we got the Cap Creek location uh, teed up, man. You know what? Yeah, I, know. I know that's a good location. <laughs> I know that's a good location. <laughs> it's you know, I want to get on down yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, it is a more reasonable commute. Yeah, I mean, brother, so I thought Coca Cola was. Well, yeah. Coca Cola is here in Atlanta, and they ain't cut a check yet. Yeah, we gotta get on them too. Coke. You know, I mean, I've been, I've been drinking them less and less. Don't get that twisted. I've been drinking that Coke less, but you know, they they, they definitely should. If you're being compensated me after all these years. Um, Somebody say explain Psalm 73 and 4. We'll go ahead and get it. Yes, it. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For there are no bands in their death, mm -hmm. but their strength is firm. Let me start. Right. Off. So it's it's talking about the ungodly. It's talking about the Edomites. Yeah. And that the Edomites, that even when they die, nothing, even in their death, their legacy and their kingdom continues. Yeah. And this is something that was frustrating. Um, to see just like it's frustrating for us to see. And this is what leads our people to assimilate um, is seeing things like that. Yeah. Right. So that whole Psalm 73, it's about Esau. Yeah. Oh, you need that non-American Coca-Cola. I've had that non-American Coca-Cola. Yeah. Right. You forget. I used to live in a border town. That's right. That Mexican Coke, that Mexican, Coke. That Mexican Dr. Pepper. Pure cane sugar. Oh, it's hitting different with that pure cane up in it. <sighs> That's the real good stuff. When we talk about that pure cane. Somebody said uh, the believe of the report brought a good point about free will. He said, mm -hmm. when you look at the words of the Sadducees, it lists heresies that they held on to and free will is there. So free will. Was oh, the Sadducees like, believed in free will. Yeah, free, I didn't know that. Yeah, the Water Brother believed the report. Guess what? God. Oh, hold on. Now I'm gonna show you how to text Deacon. Deacon, why are we gonna put this in the roller decks? You just wait. Deacon, watch this. Boom. Uh, Sadducees. They believed in free will. It's gorilla time. I missed it. As a heresy. Heresies. Yeah, Zeke. They subscribed. <clears throat> Your brother Daya said, waiting for Sakari in Italy. Whew. You don't got to wait. Shout out to Italy. Let me tell you something, man. Yeah. Well, number one, you build it. Yeah. So my niggas in Italy, yeah. Um, the Nigerians, the, the, the Nigerian Kamara. Uh, out there in Italy, they're not you know Nigeria. They got their own family in the mob yeah. in Italy. Dang. They're running things out there. Huh. They've infiltrated the mafia. I thought you had to be Sicilian. No, they got Nigerians in the mob now. Yeah. They taking over the mob. Yeah. <laughs> Do your Googles, Michael X. Y'all by Shimmy Al Shabrak. I thought what he says. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves for charities to cover a multiple sin. That's, That's a right. powerful verse. That's, right. That's a powerful verse. Uh, be Israel or be killed. What do you mean? Uh, the scripture for free will with the priest. Are you asking about the one that's already been read, or are you asking for a specific one? Good stuff, believers. The report. We definitely appreciate that. You know, brothers got that good info. We love it. We'll take it. We want to research it. We so like it, and we want to utilize it. Right? We know the Most High ain't just dealing with us. He's dealing with his people. So, you know, brothers is, is learning things and coming up on very useful and pertinent information, and we 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 are open ears to it. Well, I felt great when I got here, but I feel great now. Don't get that twisted, brother. I always feel great. Hey, so lot like, believes that a report, those sources that you're talking about that prove the Sadducees held on to their Pharisee, uh, I mean the heresy of free will, just send them over. 
to uh, Chief Instagram. DM. Yeah, yeah. DM, if you could DM to me on e Instagram, that'll be great. What tribe would the Igbo be from? Well, the Igbo are, I would say, predominantly Judah, but they're not limited to Judah. The Southern Kingdom is amongst the Igbo, uh, Benjamin, and Levi as well. Uh, Lorna Park, see how about Shemiel Shawberg, the water water. <coughs> was Job talking it about your house? Pounds in the, in the chat. You said, well, yeah, the, the, the pounds. pounds. That's pounds. Them five pounds. Yeah, man. so that 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 then is six dollars right there, <laughs> right, right? right? So right. we appreciate that. Okay. And that's worth much more than this American BS. Okay. Um, was Job talking about your shy when he says until my change come? No, he's talking about until he 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 gets out of that out lower of state, yeah. back into a better position. His change. Somebody asks, what are what are the uh, genealogies of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Well, Matthew is a Levite. Yep. It tells you that very clearly yep. in the Gospels. Um, Luke would be a Greek, um, a, a Gentile convert, an Israelite uh, who was born Israelite into the Greekus faction, yeah. who who had to come back. Uh, Mark the same, and then um, John would be a, a Southern Kingdom Israelite, Judah or Benjamin. His tribe is not uh, specified. Zulu people are not Israelites. God. Have I ever used Philo in a debate? Yeah. You have to use Philo. Um, you absolutely have to use Philo. If you're dealing with certain periods of time, the utilization of Philo is unavoidable. You got to understand Philo is an authority authority yeah. in history yeah. people could dislike him all they want but there are gaps in history that only he can fill in God. so a uh, follow is definitely necessary um when discussing certain history especially um you know in the near east in the greco-roman world he's a must No, not that the chief priest believed it, that the Sadducees believed. He has sources, so there's historical documentation on it. It wasn't a, a precept on that. Listen, is the heresies in which that they believed in free will, which would make it would make sense. They don't believe in the re resurrection. They believe like that goes right along with that. Yeah. The Sadducees, which were the bootlegs of Dakites. All right, remember that. Remember that. Not the real Zadakites. You know, so again, that goes back. Well, I talked about that earlier. This kind of brings it full circle um, because we did have problems when we came out of, of Babylon, though we didn't have the issue of idolatry as we once did. Um, we had problems. We had the four philosophies. We had essentially political parties um, in Israel, and that was the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, um, the Essenes, and the zealots you read about the Essenes and the maccabees are called the Assyrians, yeah. right um pious is what that means you had the zealots with the activities um but basically the, the Essenes and the and the um zealots are both related to the maccabees and the pharisees sadducees kind of precede um the maccabees and the hasmonean dynasty and things like that but those are those four things and, and there was different interpretations that's why the purest if you want to take a look at our culture in its purest form, you have to go before the Babylonian exile. That's called pre-exilic Israel. Pre-exilic Israel is us following what we got from the Most High, right? Um, there was outside influences that came in idolatry and things like that, which is very easy to distinguish. But after we come out of Babylon, Though, again, we do not have the issue of idolatry, we do have foreign influences in other ways. This is where we put names on our uh, calendar, on our months. We got that from Babylon, right? Um, and certain other things, ideologies that we began to, to bring, um, especially with those Sadducees and things like that, certain of the Essenes, um, this came from Babylon. This, this came from foreign influence. Don't get it twisted. Um, so, yeah. In the Apocrypha, Daniel slays a dragon. Do you believe it was real? Uh, uh, most certainly. And you can just look at the Ishtar gate um, in ancient Babylon. And they had it. It'll show you what it looked like. Yeah. Bell and the dragon. 
and there's fossils of of that dragon um and it's not a dragon like the the chinese dragon don't get that twisted but a dragon as it's translated into the english it just means like a lizard a big lizard so it was a reptile komodo exactly you can say you can see a dragon the komodo dragon an oversized goddamn iguana (laughs) will qualify as a dragon right Hassan Campbell, he got these crazy ass pets. Hold on. Yeah, y'all just about to say the, with the little. Yeah, they're, like they're hella of, uh, dope. Holes, you know yeah, they're holes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. them dragons. Man. Yeah, them dragons. Yeah. What's that? That lizard starts. Like that slick a mane, a, a mane for real. Exactly. Like a, a rep, like a scaly mane. A reptile that starts with a T. Is it the tickets? Why, why, why are you getting that? Somebody said, do the Sicilians have a connection to Israel? No. Yes, they do. Yes. Sicilians are Israelites. Right? Sicilians, yeah, Sicilians most certainly. Um, Yeah, the Tegus, these niggas. Yeah. You look this up, T-E-G-U-S, you look that up. That's a goddamn dragon. Very interesting creatures <laughs> of the most high. <laughs> right. But I just see some interesting creatures. I'll be looking up just crazy like animals and stuff, bro. Most high, most high would just be doing all kind of stuff. <laughs> Komodo yeah. dragon. Those are my all my favorite animal growing. Yeah. I seen the Komodo. I said this. That's a hell of a specimen. Good. Right there. Most high, like a big ass alligator, stand up, hella tall. Yeah. Look at that. And will kill some and acid. spit acid. Yeah. God, me, Listen. Get on the YouTube and you look and look up. Komodo dragons fighting, killing yeah. different ant- man. Yeah. They don't be standing a chance they ain't against got that a nigga. Chance, bro. They ain't got a chance in hell. End up just fast. Get the crawling, <laughs> he's man, moving. Man. Like the soul witness said, dragon, dinosaur, lizard, serpent, they're all interchangeable in some languages. <clears throat> right. Is he? So, in in like my accent, that's the fire. It's that damn. That uh 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 that that acid that they spitting it ain't actual um fire yeah yeah hey, he's shooting fire yeah he burnt it burnt it didn't it, burnt it? it yeah, well then goddamn it that's fire then okay yeah you the know, look like just a, like a mini uh man this is crazy like, like a mini komodo I seen yeah. the first time I seen that uh what you know, said what's his name uh Hassan Campbell has them as pets. I ain't doing that. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I ain't doing that. Them things look serious. I just seen a picture. They got one laying next to their dog, pet dog. Mm-hmm. They got a pet tigus next to the dog. I ain't doing that. The big as hell? Big as It's the same length as the dog. <laughs> a little longer than the dog, including <laughs> the tail. Man, that's ridiculous. And when you go into certain areas like California, if you in the desert, you down there in Florida, you'll just see these damn dragons running around. That's ridiculous. Running around wild. See what I'm saying? I am not impressed. Not doing that. Uh-huh. He said uh, he thought fossils of dinosaurs are just <laughs> dragons. No. Well, a lot of those fossils, don't get it, that fossil thing always twisted. A lot of them false, fa- fossils are, are falsified. God. They're fossils. Yeah. All right? <laughs> a lot of that. And guess what? If you research, they'll tell you that. That's yeah. the cold part about it. They'll tell you that they found only a couple of bones and the rest of the bones are artificial. And a lot of those exhibits, right? They'll tell you that. Feel me? Get the most high, man. He just he just show off, man. I'll do anything. And don't get to don't get to what's in the water started. <laughs> nigga, forget about what's in that goddamn ocean, nigga. Man, bro. I hold no parts, bro. <laughs> a whole new world. Right, right. Remember, she was talking about the earth. <laughs> nah, nigga, bitch, you're in the whole new world. God damn it, Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> if I sent the reference, I want to email the PDF. Yeah, email gorillahebrew at gmail.com. Somebody said Enoch was before writing. You can't prove that. Yeah, yeah. that's 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 unprovable. Yeah. Um, that's totally assumptive. Uh, is there a way to determine your lineage biblically? Like if you're an Israelite or some other nation as far as back as 
uh, back my family is African American, so called. I ask because intermixing. Well, the the way is through your genealogy, sir. Yeah. There's there's no other way. Uh, Dina, Yahweh Bashimi Alshah Barakata Wathawada. She says, "What is your take on the recent attacks uh, on the camps? I haven't spoken on that. Right." You know, uh, prayers with our brothers, angels in camp around about our brothers everywhere. <laughs> she thought she was gonna pay for you to talk about it. <laughs> I, I I haven't made any statements, <laughs> and I will not be making um any statements. You know, we definitely checked on our brothers. You know, and we and uh, you know we pray and hope uh, the most high, well. and that's everywhere because. Uh, even though that situation occurred in Chicago, the reality is that um, uh, th this can trickle elsewhere. We know that also the ISUBK uh, school in Indiana was driven into yeah. uh, by a Palestinian woman. Those reports broke. Um, today I shared that on my story on Instagram, or yesterday rather. So, um, you know, they could aim to, the Palestinians could aim, or, you know, some of the protesters could aim to come against us. So, you know, I just pray the most high. Uh, send them angels to encamp round about us. Uh, period. You know, that's really not. You know, we not here to uh, uh, go to war with the Palestinians. God, saying, but for the record, Sakari pro Palestine right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pro Palestine. I, that's the rhetoric I've been using. God. I've been using pro Palestinian rhetoric. You know. Easy, easy. Yeah, Ural, and that's why we have to. Um, he said. He said they think we were Israel. Like I was upset. Not at the brothers, but I'm talking. I was upset at a, at news outlets that were reporting the incident as if the Akim from Watchmen are pro palate are, are pro Israel, like exactly. are pro Israel. Pro were there to counter the, the Palestinian. No, the brothers was holding the camp like they do every week. Right. Um, so you know, it's it's definitely important that we totally differentiate ourselves from um the Israelis. Exactly. You know. Al-Quranah says the Muslims been bucking up. So, you know, we just got to use wisdom. Use wisdom, everybody. God. Use wisdom. You know? That's that's what I definitely want to employ everybody. Use wisdom. You know, we don't want to get caught up in a fight <laughs> that's not ours. Right? Yeah, I wish I said it's my kingdom, my service will fight. So, it ain't our time to fight yet. God. Uh, You know, when the elect is delivered, Valley Jehoshaphat, things like that, that's when Israel, the true Israel, is going to fight. Who wrote the book of Enoch? Um, not Enoch. The book of Enoch is a uh, pseudo. Yeah, yo, yeah, give me the author. Okay, give me the nigga. Some weird cracker. Eighteen, eighteen hundreds. It was written over there. Eighteen or seventeen hundreds. I remember we had did an installation. We use that book of Enoch as a, as a board under the eye. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's we right. Use that book of Enoch, man. <laughs> That's what this is good for. Right. That's right. Uh, Raquam, y'all about Shemi Al-Shar Barakatha Big up to my Manasseh right, brother. The old goat. Old Manasseh right goat. Saga la palabra. No, Sister Dina, I understand that totally, right? I understand that totally, but I ain't. I just ain't spoke too much about it. Um, you know, the vice. I don't. I haven't watched. Uh, I watched some of the, the, the like the Watchmen and things like that, but I don't. I don't have full understanding um, of the situation. But I, I don't have to have understanding of the situation to know. Hey, I pray for protection on my brothers. You know, support my brothers, things of that nature. So that's all. I'm just, you know. Yeah. Uh. The Book of Enoch, Jubilees, and Jasher, Compact Edition, written by Derek A. Shaver. That's the nigga right there, Derek A. Shaver. Yeah. Not a man of God. It says what? He's the author, compiler, and editor. Mm -hmm. See that? See how that works? Uh, Joshua Flores. Wait, wasn't the Book of Enoch found with the dishes? Yeah, part of the Book of Enoch 
that's part of what they based the book of Enoch off of. Yes. But a whole lot of stuff writings were found that people don't follow that because you have to understand who was at Qumran and what they believed. They believed the Messiah was already with them. Yeah. Right. So the people at Qumran and their understanding, these were seen people, their understanding and their customs, what they believed is not on line in alignment with what was mainline at all and accepted in jewelry, etc. So just because it was found at Quamron does not qualify it, right? So the Dead Sea Scrolls would, I mean, uh, the, the Book of Enoch would go amongst that, and it wasn't a complete Book of Enoch either. The soul witness all praises. Somebody want to know where is the card come to Trinidad? You want the card come to Trinidad? Produce. Right, it's produce, man. I got that email. Like, yeah, produce. You want to know when we coming to your city? You need to go ahead and 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 email join at sakari dot com. Right, and, and get in this thing and yeah. get join. Right, or or yeah, or pay for the trip. Good, there you go. Right. When is Sakari coming to Africa? We need Sakari in Cape Verde. You know, we got. We yeah, Cape just you just got to book the trip, man. Yeah. The international trips, especially they, they think cost right. P, you know. These are expensive. It ain't like, you know, I'm going to Chicago. I got these Chicago tickets for the Lolo, yeah. right? Vegas tickets I got for the low yeah. through the Spirit of Most High. Yeah. I want to say I got less than $100 for my Chicago round trip. Um, yeah, $65. Yeah. $130 for my Vegas trip. You see what I'm saying? That, that just the airfare, right? Yeah. It ain't going to be like that going to Trinidad and going to Cape Verde. And then because we don't have brothers out there, right. we're going to have to bring the manpower, you know? We're gonna have to bring the manpower. Like you said, book. I'm mean, I'm booked in Chicago. I was booked to go to Vegas. I want you to understand that, right? So you know, you know, we we gonna start taking bookings now, right? Right in the spirit, <laughs> right. you know. And you know, I've seen that believe in those books have always been mentally. T- yes, straw boogie, for, certainly. Okay, for you. Certainly, you got a precept on that. Shout out to it's, you, the Diana is Bible in other cities. Is is K Verdian all praises? Well, you know we got a we got K Verdians down with us. Uh, brother, brothers, Rib brothers, and y'all Rib K Verdian. We down with the K Verdian people. Well, who's with you? Which your brother, Baba Luan, out there in uh uh, uh Vegas? He's K Verdian. Yeah, so we down with the K Verdian. All praises. Go ahead. Yeah, the Book of Saint Luke, chapter four, verse forty three. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. Mm-hmm. Right? For therefore am I sent. Yeah, go to them other cities, man. Mm-hmm. Right? You can't be stuck in one city. He said Trinidad is turning into a world. No, I'm not familiar with that. I got to look into that. Yeah. Then they got a Trinidad Reddit. Yeah, is that like the brother just said? We went in there and then, hey, they hit us with Ephraim. They hit us with some charges at the Airbnb in Puerto Rico. I had to shake brothers back down. We had to go because some stuff got messed up. You know, brothers messed up some of the stuff in the house. Man, Ephraim was tripping. Now, hey, listen, that had been the heathen, man. I wouldn't have gave a damn. Yeah. But, hey, it's our brother. <coughs> we broke things in our brother's home. We got to keep the commandments. Right. So we had to go and say, I think everybody had to get probably like an extra 175 just to cover what got broke. Jeez. And many of us had nothing to do with any breaking of anything either. I want that on the record. Right? But we all had to put in on that. So, you know, these 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 things that you're requiring, you, now you bring up the Puerto Rico trip. It was a beautiful trip. Um, but, you know, these international traveling, it, it gets costly. You know? It gets costly. So, you know, uh, if, you, if y'all would like us to come to your country, things like that, we're certainly um, interested. But, is you know it's gonna cost so you know if you have something that you could um assist us with to do so man that would be appreciated so she says are east africans israelites there are israelites scattered in east africa but in general no east africans are not israelites you know they're mostly uh from kush and matsarim and mizraim right ancient nubians and ancient um ethiopian eritrean somalians I 
Ak, the animals Esau exterminated like the dodo bird and the other nations killed others. Does scripture talk about it? No, just, just, just in general that what Esau does to the earth and what these people do to the earth. It says, are they gone for good or is the most high hiding them for the kingdom or are they going to be recreated? I'm not sure. <laughs> That's a good question. The Malawi, I don't know about the Malawi. He said anything will be restored, though. The refreshing. <laughs> they could be. Talk about the account, like the refreshing. They could be. Uh, <laughs> between the gang culture, the Venezuela cartels. <laughs> bro, their extermination is crazy. Bro, it's hella, it ain't gonna lie, it's hella uh, species of this, this exterminated this on deal. the brink of extermination. Mm -hmm. Plenty in danger. Yeah, plenty in danger species. So I'm, I'm sure the most I go is gonna bring it to this like, to spirit. You know, what? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna look into that situation there in Trinidad. That's why so many Venezuelans coming up into the United States right now. Yeah. How do you join the camp? Email join at Sakari dot camp. You know, I meant to ask the question a good minute. Or the Sudanese, the real ancient, yeah, the real ancient Nubians, yeah. those original founders of Egypt. But many people came into Egypt, though. And this is something that Garfield was going into. During different periods of time, the Persians came, the Greeks came, the Arabs came, um, the Israelites came into Egypt. Um, I'm not talking about when we started in the exit, I'm talking about later. Um, so Egypt was not homogenous, but it was founded by those nubians right it was founded by the nubians um the, those are the people the original descendants of ham that founded egypt those nubians or those sudanese right called the nilotic people the nilotic you just look up the nilotic people right where can i study on the northern kingdom just go watch um vivi asharala when you watch our la the last debate, my last debate is not available on YouTube at this time. It is up to Sonetta when he'd like to release that onto the YouTube, probably a few more weeks. Um, I'll look into the Malawi. Yeah, a lot of Venezuelans are actually coming here to Atlanta. It's becoming a sanctuary city for those Venezuelan refugees. You met one at the gym, huh? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, nigga, I know you from Venezuela, nigga. Oh, for real? All oh, praises. Okay, okay. Shout out Venezuelans, man. How did East Indians end up in Trinidad? The British. The British brought them over there. Remember, the British had already colonized uh, India at that time. So they brought those East Indians over. Will Zadok be Yahweh Shai's high priest in the kingdom? Yes. Yeah, uh, Trinidad definitely has a high concentration of Levites. A lot of French fled Haiti during the revolution with their slaves. This is where, like, Foxy Brown, for example, um, famous Trinidadian rapper, of course, legendary female rapper. She's actually a Levite the whole time. Just go look at her name. But she also has, you know, from being over there in Trinidad, her family have Chinese up in it. East Indian up in it, Benjamin up in it, but her lineage is Levi. One more question since the book of Job. Job wasn't an Israelite. Is it Job is an Israelite? Where are you getting this idea that Job is not an Israelite? Pre Israel. Yeah, that's bullshit. There's absolutely zero. Indication or proof to that. Job wasn't Israel. Is it fair to teach that not Israelite can be served to God? You know, there's no indication that Job is not Israelite. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's that's ridiculous. It would just have called him Edomite. 
Right. Like it calls the Edomites in the book Edomites. See how that works? And I said, what qualifications are for the 144,000? Whatever qualifications the most high deems. Uh, frankly, you have to be predestinated to be 144,000, uh, ultimately. Exactly. Uh, you know, that's what the quali qualification is. God had to have chosen you to be that. So. Damn, Nepal earthquake so far, 150 people dead. Yeah, I seen that earthquake. Huge. Yeah, Judites, some Judites came to certain places in the islands, but, you know, not a lot. They didn't really last long. Yeah, Store Boogie, that's such a, just an unfounded doctrine. That That's what we call a, re, that's a doctrine that got created just as a reach yeah. to just try to just get heathens in the door, man. But we didn't let the bruise in the door. See how that worked? Oh, yeah, we were definitely off in that French army. You know, Levi, man, we everywhere, man. I'm saying how long we been up? At least three hours. Yeah. It's four hours, frankly, like three and a half hours for real. Uh, yeah, and there's a lot of Levi that's down there, especially um, – Honduras, when you do Dr. Sebi's history, he's a Levite. Um, but out of Honduras, Ecuador, um, Brazil, uh, Chile, uh, Argentina, we're down there heavily. We down there. Without any question, you know. The Levites. We we scatter amongst all tribes. That's our that's our allotment to be scattered amongst um all twelve tribes. That's our allotment, y'all. All right, Florida, of course. <laughs> amongst Reuben. Yeah, man. It's gonna be seven thirty, man. We're going strong in the spirit of the Most High. Yeah, I'm smooth with that. You see that? What about the Micronesian Islands? Um, you know, I have somebody has made me privy to information about the South Sea slave trade and um, Israelites in the South Pacific. Um, so I'm still doing my research on that. Most I will, uh, if the Spirit guides and allows um, some understanding, I, I, I'll present it as I um, come to conclusions on it. Okay, cool. I'll definitely go back and study. I got through a couple of y'all videos, and I definitely, um, a video still up of Deacon saying Job wasn't Israelite. Deacon has never said Job wasn't an Israelite. <laughs> he was probably devil's advocate. Anyway. Yeah, he, he probably was uh, talking about the argument yeah. or entertaining the argument. Deacon has never said Job is not an Israelite. Oh, I'll pray to Sister Dina. Oh, good old Dr. Sebi, the man. Got rid of him because, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, the man. Yeah, the man. It's for is, sure. Is this the man? Is this the man? Right. Is this the man? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But when you, you get into his history, he says he says his grandparents are from Haiti. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fact. It's all you. That's, that's, that's how that works. Yeah, man. You feel me? I went to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Deacon definitely never said that. Trust me. There's no doctrine. You have to understand something about the doctrines of Sakari. Before a doctrine is taught, me and Deacon have a series of conversations about it. So Deacon not just going to get on the internet and say Job is an Israelite without talking to me about it um, and, uh, and us fighting about it first before and and then once you know there's a once it's trump once it's scrutinized and it's trump tight we're bringing it to you 
We bring it to y'all through the spirit once it's Trump tight. You know what I'm saying? You know, they listen, this brother Deacon on the casual jaw. He come to me with some stuff. I come with pure, I come with an ax. I call him with something. He come with ax. Okay. That's how, you know, things work through the spirit. Um, That's how the most high showed us to operate. And that's why that's what's led to our effectiveness God. in debate. God. The fact that we take very strong positions through the spirit. Yeah. But that's all the most high. Yeah, like you know, this church of Berea around here, man. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? uh-huh. So thoroughly through the scriptures, man. You understand? That's it. That is absolutely it. Okay, so y'all saw some type of ball in Florida. That's right, so witness. And a uh, straw boogie. That's crazy. Hell is going on down there in Florida. Devil went down to Florida, apparently. Um, we, we based the, the the Sabbath off the lunar phases, so it has been Friday to Saturday. But um, <laughs> next Monday is a new moon or Sunday night. So next Sunday, in a week from now, yeah. the evening, a week from now, will mark the Sabbath. Because yeah, remember, the Sabbath is a sign. Yeah, signs are marked, right. marked by what the moon, not by your Hooters calendar. <laughs> right, your Sports Illustrated swimsuit count. Right, right, your Playboy count. Your Playboy count, <laughs> nigga. Playmate of the month. Yeah. All Playmate, right, Playmate we know about you, niggas, crazy. man. Okay. <laughs> Watch the brother for the star saying Playboy equals sin. Don't start. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh huh. Nah, for real. Uh, why do people say this is the star of Molek? Um, let me get into that. That's a great question. Why do people say the image that is called the Star of David is the Star of Molech? Um, The reason is because they have fallen victim to anti-Semitic propaganda, so-called anti-Semitic propaganda, right? There's been a movement of white Christians who are what you would call or what the world would call anti-Semitic. They dislike Jewish people, right? And through their dislike of Jewish people, they have gone out of their way to attempt to demonize Jewish people as much as possible, right? So what they've done is they've went and totally ignored um, all historical research and context. They have totally ignored the Hebraic language in which the scripture was originally written in, the Greek language in which the scripture in the New Testament was originally written in. They've ignored all of that, right? And they have falsely called a symbol, number one, a star. And number two, connected it to a deity that there is not a single shred of archaeological evidence to connect it to, which is Moloch. None. Right. So people saying the star of Molech, again, have fallen victim to massive uh, white propaganda campaigns against Jewish people. Right. All the information out there that says it's the star of Molech. Right. Are from white evangelical radical Christians who are against Jewish people. There is no historical source that coincides with that understanding whatsoever right all we got to do let's get the word star in the hebrew there nothing at all to do with this is actually talking about certain idols figurines fashion after people right um chion molek things of that nature And the cold thing about it as well, because these are just geometric shapes. It's just a geometric shape. A geometric shape cannot just be, you know, wicked by itself, right? Um, yeah, right. It, it, it just, no. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, this Amos 5 and 26, where it says, uh, but ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Chion, your images, the star of your God, mm-hmm. which ye made to yourselves. Right, so the tabernacle is, of course, a place where these things were worshipped. Then it said the star right. of your God. Now, number one, a star is not a hexagram. That what you would call a hexagram, which is the geometrical name of the symbol. That's not a star. Stars don't look like that. Stars are balls of gas, right? They're circular. 
they are not um hexagrams they right. don't have points right right let's read yeah so you go to uh the hebrew for the word star there is h3556 kabob mm -hmm. right kabob which means star of messiah brothers youth numerous progenies mm -hmm. it says in a sense uh in the sense of blazing a star, a round, or a as shining, a round as round or as shining, round, round, <laughs> round, right? So I didn't know something that has six points, yeah, was round, right? I didn't know something that has twelve sides was round, right? See that? So it's a total misunderstanding here. I'm not going to even blame the brothers who believe in it. Yeah. I'm going to blame the white people that hate Jewish people, their brothers who have put out this propaganda, but our brothers have to be spiritual enough and have to be sensible enough to actually, um, decipher the, the things in which they're researching and scrutinizing the sources that they're getting their information from, right? The book of Proverbs, or I believe it's Proverbs of Sirach that tells you, Sirach, it tells you before you counsel with somebody, know what their motives are. You know what I'm talking about, Isaiah? Get that for me, in Sirach. See, the problem is the people that you're getting this information from, you need to understand what their motives are, what their biases are, and that they're trying to confirm their bias. The, the bias that they're attempting to confirm is that there's something evil about Jewish people. That's the, 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 the line that they push it, right? That's where you're getting this information from. And I challenge anybody who's taking this stance about the star of what they call the star of David, which we don't call the star of David. We're talking about a, a geometrical shape that occurs in various places in nature that are referred to in the scriptures that we can demonstrate. We could demonstrate it in antiquity being an image or a symbol in which that was utilized by our ancestors. It's no problem at all. Um, but anybody who's taking the position contrawise of that, that it is the star of Molech, I need to see your sources. And what you're going to find out once you scrutinize your sources is these are anti-Semitic white people. Right? And I know that's oxymoronic because white people are Edomites. They are Semitic. Um, but that term, I'm just using that term colloquially as it's came to be known. Right? Go ahead. Yeah, this is the book of Sirach, chapter, <clears throat> chapter 37, verse 7. It says... Every counselor extols counsel, uh -huh. but there is some that counsels for himself. So some counsel for themselves. So that counsel about that symbol that people are eating up with the very small amount of surface level, non-ancient research that they're doing on yeah. the symbol, um, they're, they're getting counseled by somebody who's counseling for themselves. Right? Read on. It says, beware of a counselor. Beware of a counselor. When you take counsel with somebody, beware of a counselor. Why read? It says, beware of a counselor and know before what need he has. Know the need that the counselor has because a counselor may give you instruction for their benefit, right. not for your benefit. The need in which the counselors have that told people that the star of David was the star of Molech was the demonization of Jewish people. Right was to attempt to substantiate their demonization of Jewish people with the Bible. Yeah. That's what's going on there. Right. So don't the scripture the simple believe in every word, but the prudent man, you have to be prudent. If you are prudent, you would know that the sources calling at the star of Molech are BS. Yeah. Right? Go ahead. It says, Beware of a counselor and know before what need he has, mm -hmm. for he will counsel for himself lest he cast the lot upon thee. That's it. They counsel for themselves, and some of our people have eaten up something that is demonizing a symbol that, again, was used by our ancestors in antiquity <laughs> that had absolutely nothing at all to do with idolatry, with a Molech whatsoever. Again, that is unsubstantiatable in antiquity. If you look up any archaeology on Molech, this symbol cannot be found in relation to it whatsoever. This is unsubstantiatable, right? It is... They, they just saw a star and an idol and ran with it, and brothers ate it up, unfortunately, right? But again, I can show this symbol as early as 1000 BCE or in the neighborhood of that in our land amongst our people. We can show this symbol, right? So, um, no. No, no, no. It's gorilla time.
And also, like you said, is the star of David, the city shaped like a cube. And, and, and what's coming down out of heaven is shaped like that symbol in Revelation, right? The cube. Um, the menorah is also shaped like that symbol from its aerial view. People who are, aren't actually studying antiquity don't know this. But if you study antiquity, you study what the scriptures are describing in Revelation. If you study what an actual menorah looked like, right? Do we got that? I got that menorah in the back. So check on that for me. It should be in the back. Through the spirit. Come. I think it is back there. You know that lily, man. <sighs> uh an amazing an antique pair of earrings with that with that lily on it. Yeah. They got it. They make it in they call it the lily in, in Ghana. Yeah. I, I used to have an ebony uh lily. All of us used to. Damn near that was in San Diego. My sis out there, man, used to plug us, used to go to Ghana, get them and plug us with them. Um like Joshua Flores says, be a Berean and do your studies, just not a brother Berean. That's right. Um <laughs> shout out to Brother Berean. Amos says, where do we start with follow? What do you mean, brother? I don't understand what you mean. When it comes to getting a better understanding and accuracy of two original texts, which one, the ESV or NIV, is better to study with? Now, I wouldn't say any one is better to study with. I would say look at all of them. Look at all of them. Yeah, Israel is likened unto a lily. Um, which of course is that sim same symbol. We see that same symbol. All <coughs> the elect are, are likened to lilies too, ain't it? Uh, the lilies of the field. With Solomon. Uh, yeah, yeah. When you go into the the symbology of that, God. ooh, that's bad. Are we coming to DC? I don't have any current. Well, yeah, possibly. We were supposed to. You know, there's been some scheduling conflicts, but uh. Our DMV, our, our Baltimore brothers have been trying to get us to come out there. So we'll, uh, I plan to most I will soon. No, you don't see one back. It's a no. It, I got a menorah back there for sure. Because it's, it, it's it's we got the 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 plate the the plate is in there. It might be at the house though, but I want to say, man, it's in there. Oh, in South Africa, are Israelites? I couldn't tell you of a certainty. Uh, somebody said followed in the Church of Christ, or at least to my knowledge, but it was probably because of his political position. Um, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, time periods, things like that. He was around during his time, but um, there could be any multitude of reasons for that. Well, yeah, they're saying that the, the limbo, the limbo aren't, they're in Southeast Africa, but they're not like in South Africa. Or there might be some there, but all praises. Okay. You gotta be at the house then. But yeah, the original menorah didn't look nothing like um it like the the one everybody has, that's not how the menorah looks. A menorah is not even a candlestick. It's a lamp. You fill with oil 
and you burn it that way. Some of y'all don't know, even know, I ain't had a grandma with no real lamp in her house before. Some of y'all, right? Some of y'all, uh, you know, where you put the oil in and you cut it on, then that lamp go, right? Yeah, I shared it a little bit ago. Uh huh. You gotta ask um uh Ariella about the readiness of the Hebrews like Bible. Yeah, we're gonna do that here on, on uh on Chief Dome sometimes. Well, if you gotta if you, it should be in your zone of inf- honestly. Yeah, it's a lampstand. Yeah, Kabob, we, we went into that way earlier in the video. I want to do animations of the comments of the Asian car. That'll be dope. I would love to work with you on that. Yeah, she used to light the lamp and now you to light the house. You see what I'm saying? That that's that real lamp. That's what a menorah was. You know, with seven arms, one in the middle, and then the six. Boom, boom, boom. That's how a a, a, a lily is. See how that works? Oh, praise. That number's getting up. We almost at 200. I see y'all niggas up now. Hit that like. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Better hit that like button. What does pass under the rod in the wilderness mean? It means enter into the covenant. Simple. Right? Means to be led. How do we celebrate feast days? Uh, here's what I'm going to tell you. It's very easy to celebrate feast days. What does feast mean? Do that. Shalom. <laughs> NLMB777. I can't deal with that unless Yahawashai confirms it personally. What are you talking about? And who do you think you are that Yahawashai is giving you personal confirmations? Those are, those are my two questions, King. Shalom from a horrible place called Colleen, Texas. Shalom to you and get out of Colleen, Texas. Uh, what's the difference, Paleo-Hebrew and Modern Hebrew? Why do most people use the Tetragrammaton, Paleo-Hebrew version of God, but a uh, name, but the modern square, or at least it's not common? Well, people use the Paleo-Hebrew, um, but if you want to type, it's... Uh, Modern Hebrew is easier to get a hold of. But what's the difference between paleo and modern Hebrew? Well, brother, you answer your own question. Paleo means hella go, primitive. And modern means like right now. Recent. Recent. All praises. Chief, don't be in the building. If Yahushua is talking to you today, brother, you might be. You know, Yahushua ain't hollering nobody directly. How ain't how ain't nobody directly? That's not how things work. So that like that statement's kind of like, yeah, I wish I got to confirm it to me personally. Oh, I, I didn't know we getting personal confirmations, right. you know, from the king, brother. I didn't know that. That's different. Rips, rips, all red rips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, you cannot tribe jump. Moses is not David. I, I would love to see the parallels between Moses and David. I don't even know no parallels. Other than they was king. Them niggas was not the same. Whatsoever. They different lives. Different lives. Yeah. <coughs> That's funny. And complete different responsibilities to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. to, to a degree. <laughs> I 
and I've never heard somebody say Moses and David the same spirit. Though. I don't know where they came from. GMS teach them. GMS teach it. Mm -hmm. Finish. They did at the time, but that come from that comes from my shop. Yeah, I was about to say they come from my shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it come from my shop. Where it go? Not he taught it, but through them saying my shop was King, was David, King David, that led into Moses is David is Peter. That 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 went into that whole thing because his name Peter. But his Hebrew name was Masha, but they believe he was David. Yeah. So they they put that I together. Mm -hmm. Three of Hey, did you pull up the uh the menorah? People said they wanted to see it. No, well, the way the way we set up today, I can't really. Show, not I can't show the screen, but it's not. It's definitely not convenient with the setup to show the screen. Um, well, I was saying just like put it up on the phone. He was gonna zoom in with the camera. Uh, I could, but you know, or they could just look up three D menorah. Which we need to look up is. <laughs> spiral. You look up spiral menorah. Is that why you look up uh, spiral? Um. Oh. Uh, spiral. Um. It's a um spinning. That's it. Spinning menorah. Did you get the uh did you uh explain that John? What does it mean that the veil was rent in two in Matthew 27 51? Also, what do you how I mean we'll do greater works than him? Um, you know, people really, really go crazy over the veil being <clears throat> rent into two. Um the veil being rent into two was just symbolic um of Yahweh Shai's mediation on our behalf when the temple fell, right? Um, which didn't even go into direct effect at the time in which that happened. It happened later. One. Two. Uh, what was the second question? Uh, it's a lot. It says, what does it mean that the veil was written to? And also, what did Yahweh Shai mean will do greater works than him? Whatever he did will do greater things. That's pretty that one's pretty simple. Yeah. Um, it's not spinning. What is it? It's it's uh you said what? No, it's called a uh it's a word you gotta use. Not spinning, not spiral, rotating. Mm -hmm. Menorah. They got one right there. Oh, mm -hmm. that's a new one. This is the one I got. Yeah, rotating seven on. It's not showing the rotational. Here we go. We go zoom in on that. This is a nine, though. But it's actually rotating. See that? So when you position it, it looks like how this one, too. How the lily look from above, or the star of David from above is the symbol that gets made. See that? Spirit and power, bro. So that's that's that. So 
People don't even know they call themselves the Star Molek, and they got a menorah on. They don't realize they're wearing the same symbol, just from a different angle. Well, I come from lack of study and um, trusting the white man, um, you know, his his madness. Also, give me Wisdom of Solomon 4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's gorilla time. Yeah. Like Dyer said, when you draw a menorah without perspective, it looks flat, but it's not flat. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, the Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 12. For the bewitching of naughtiness doeth obscure things that are honest. Yeah, so then later in time, um, you know, Satanists or whatever get a hold of the symbol. They get a hold of every symbol, and they try to make it evil and wicked. Um, and that obscures something that's honest. This is an honest thing. Again, it's a naturally occurring geometrical shape. The most high made honeycomb that makes that shape. Yeah. The most high made a snowflake that makes that shape. Right. The most high made lilies that make that shape. He made pomegranates that make that shape um, inside and out. So, you know, just because somebody did something evil with something does not. They did evil things with the Bible. Should we throw it away? They did evil things with the land of Israel. Should we not want to go back to it? See what I'm saying? If we apply that logic, we we shouldn't be doing any of this stuff. Right? So it's all ours. It's none of theirs. It's always been ours. Right? It says, Yea, speedily was he taken away, lest that wickedness should alter his understanding or deceit beguile his soul. For the bewitching of naughtiness does obscure things that are honest, and the wandering of concupiscence doeth undermine. The simple mind. Mm -hmm. <coughs> right, the naughtiness. Cosmic. How do you guys know that someone is an Israelite? Do you test the spirit or do you just go off appearance? Um, neither. We go off lineage. <laughs> DNA makes a shape. Another good point, Real Talk TV. Can we eat duck? No. Yes, yeah, so like that whole thing about testing the spirit, right? <laughs> it's so Christian. Let's start yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, think about it, man. Two-thirds of our people are not going to receive the truth. So, I mean, trying to pr predicate a person being Israelite solely off of whether or not they receive the doctrine or not, it's not going to work. We the to average Israelite is not going to receive it. Yeah. <laughs> the majority of our people are not going to receive it. Man. So the best way to try the spirit is if they reject it. If they reject it, which means the people in the truth, what are we? You <laughs> know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Right? So that's not a fair, accurate, that's not a, a fair way or adequate way of trying to figure out whether the person is Israelite. It's just ask about the lineage and then the, the, the spirit will reveal later on yeah we right? don't like for example in vegas if y'all seen the video came out that dude in vegas yeah the colombian dude yeah. the colombian rasa now somebody might say hey man i don't think he's a real club well, so, well let's say so what yeah we taught it the information went out if he get us teaching him he's an israelite if he happens to not be won't make him an israelite it won't get him saved you see that work so i'm gonna just go off of what you tell me me teaching you don't put you in the camp. Right. Right? Me teaching you don't get you a spot on the chariot. Right. I'm just going to teach you. And this video is going to be made. It's going to go out and it's going to edify. Or if you are not a real asherite, a real asherite is going to be edified. Right. Or a brother is going to be edified on how to teach a real asherite. Right. And the points to hit. Exactly. And then go do it. So it's fine. Cut. It's not no big deal. Exactly. Still work out for the good. Still work out. All things work for the good of those that love the most. High. That's right. You better goddamn believe it. Yeah, man. Have y'all ever heard of the, the parable of the wheat and the tear? There you go, like Yahweh Shai's king said, let the wheat and the tear grow together. Oh, God. That's what they just brought in there. Yeah, I don't 
see. Yeah, Joshua, that's the, the Spanish language got that down. They put the question mark in front of the sentence to let you know you're getting ready to get hit with a question. Yeah, the Ark of the Covenant is in heaven. Um, that's what I said. But it's six in the morning, Chief. What's going on, bro? Man, <laughs> hey, man, we just doing it, bro. Six in the morning, police at my door. Edibles are not against the law, but you have to watch that also because people will abuse that and use that to see some of y'all got a, a, a drug addict spirit yeah. that you need to check. Oh. Right. Oh, I can't smoke. I'm a nigga eating hella gummies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, you're still you. You, you still want to be a drug addict, right. sir. Yeah. <laughs> right. Watch that. Watch that spirit. It's idolatry. Bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You get into that idolatry. It's like covetous. We'll say covetousness was called idolatry. Up before the alarm. Remember that. Yeah, remember that always. We mm -hmm. come out long you down. I just damn sugar all over. I'm dealing with them all red rips. I figured y'all would be out here for the ANT homecoming. Hassan then was out there. Uh, Sakari, North Carolina was at uh, North Carolina A&T homecoming. Jumping. I got great reports. Great reports from that homecoming. Right? Yeah, just say no to the cocaine. And, you know, because that's a major drug. That damn cocaine. Yeah, see? Yeah, you miss it. Yeah, they was out there. North Carolina a t they was definitely out there. <clears throat> My family said there's no mention of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Uh, I, how could he be mentioned before he was born? Of course, there was no mention of him in the Old Testament. Verbatim. Verbatim. Of course. Right. How could there be? There's a, a lot of scriptures to prove Christ is the Messiah, sir. You should go watch our videos on it and our debates on it. But no, nothing's going to say the man's name um, in what they call the Old Testament before his birth. I, show me anybody who was called by name before their birth. Mushrooms are against the law. Scriptures, scriptures talk about being sober-minded. It has nothing to do with actual sobriety. Um also talks against drunkenness, but it's not talking about actual sobriety. Uh, yeah, Second Ezra does, but if he's looking for what's called the Old Testament, then, you know, that's what I'm trying to just help if they try. To, oh, no, that's, you know, trying to help him around that. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible say about pornography? Are y'all ever coming to me? We've been in Minneapolis. The Bible doesn't speak to pornography uh, specifically. Of course, it did not exist during the time of the biblical writings. You're waking up to scary hours, man. Yeah, as soon as people start asking about porn and beating off, you know it's scary. It's it's, it's getting too scary. <laughs> and it only be you're correct. Cyrus is mentioned in the Bible before he come out. Great point. Yeah, I was, I was finna say that, but Con, that's a great point. You no, know, mortify your members, y'all. <laughs> Horrendous. Yeah, scary. When scary hour becomes horrendous hours, it's time to end the live. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, time to end broadcast. We're inching up. <laughs> That's great. You know, that ain't it. Yeah, the brother's just trying to stay out of sin. <laughs> Lord willing. The menorah design has you fasting. All praise to the most high. Yeah, it's a powerful thing. Some of y'all is 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 just getting in here. We started this. There was only about 24 to 27 people. So y'all make sure y'all, whenever this is over, start back from the beginning and get this great edification through the spirit and power of your how about your shot. This is what we're doing on Chief Dome. Make sure to hit your uh, notification bell, right? Make sure to hit your notification bell. Is pigeon lawful? Not that I know of. I have to double check that, though, but I would not think so. They say pigeon is turtle doves. You know what? Yeah, young pigeon. Yeah, so pigeon would be lawful. Yep. 
Yeah, Fright Night. <laughs> it's, it's scary hours turning into Fright Night. Scary hours. Well, pornography does come from pornea, but pornography is not spoken of directly, right? Pornea is fornication, right? The second coming. Stop there with the second coming. That's you, you, that's Christian talk. Rhetoric. Christian rhetoric. The return of Yahweh Shai, Numbers twenty four. Can we get it? You can get it, yeah. So marijuana is a no go. Even if smoking weed is a no go, right? Are y'all paying attention? Shalom. I'm a one. You can have two eyes, three, four. Yes. Is iguana lawful? Hell no. <laughs> wow. Yes. Trimming down your beard is fine. 24 starting to get 17. Isaiah 63, another one. Go ahead. Yeah, the book of Numbers, chapter 24, verse 17. Mm -hmm. I shall see him, but not now. Read on. I shall behold him. But not nigh. Uh -huh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, uh -huh. and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, uh -huh. and shall smite the corners of Moab. Read on. And destroy all the children of Sheth. Uh -huh. And Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, uh -huh. and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. There you go. Destroy him that remaineth of the city. Remember that. That remaineth. A war is coming to that land. Yeah. Like you see now. And whoever's left, Yahweh Shah is going to destroy. Yeah, let's go. And when he looked upon Amalek. No, I'm just uh -huh. <laughs> see that? See that? And that's why he said that, though. And yeah. he's nigga. And you, yeah. though, that was first of the nations. God. Uh, vape unlawful, yes. Smoking, that whole act, that ritual, of that smoking thing is a ritual. Very ancient, idolatrous, wicked, <laughs> evil ritual. Yeah. Stay away from smoking. Hey, we, just, hey, we just dropped a video not too long, about a month or so ago, mm -hmm. at the vape addict, right? You yeah, the grown vape ass addict. man, put that addict. thing to your mouth, man. And that damn hookah. <laughs> hey, in Atlanta, he's smoking that hookah, man. It's good. <laughs> whole sp but yeah, she just cores just uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They they they, they just they they literally yeah. are, are looking for something to do. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Bro. You gotta understand why they do they shake their ass on their friends and they smoke. They just don't want to they want to look like they're doing something. All right, when you delve deep into the psychology, man, we we are we're in these places. If I say we need you on that Joe Rogan podcast, yeah, now, you do. Awesome. Shout out Joe Rogan, man. Yeah. I like I always liked the Joe Rogan, man. Yeah. He's an all right devil, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just I just I can understand after the first exile basically was the northern kingdom sent to America and never came back to Jerusalem. It was just the Jews that got out of captivity during Ezra. Well, yeah. Well, the yeah. northern kingdom is, is from Samaria, not Jerusalem, but yes. Um it was just the Jews. What does it mean, first of the nations? Does it mean richest nation? Yeah, they're the chief people of the earth. Yeah, the most powerful. What, what, what it means is, take a look at Jewish people right now. Right. That's the answer. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, bitter herbs just mean uncooked. Herbs that is uncooked. Yeah. You see? Do I have to tell my wives about each other? Unless you're scared, nigga. <laughs> right. <laughs> Are you as scared of that girl? Right. Right. Do I have to? All right. Yeah, we gotta bring man up Monday back. Yeah, I see. yeah, you sound shaky, bro. You feel me? If you are scared, you shouldn't have no multiple wives. If one if, if each one of them got one of your testicles in their purse. Right. <laughs> right. He, you know? A testicle yeah. jock. <laughs> but is that like he tiptoeing around here, man? What are you doing, man? Yeah, the the truffles are mushrooms, I think. Where can you find smoking? Just look up. Um, the origins of smoking weed. Right. 
<laughs> <laughs> Brothers on his ass. Gerardo got the man himself. Shout out, Brew Gaming. Yeah. All right, we're going to get on you, though. <laughs> it's you gorilla, know? Time. gorilla time. Man. You're in a Don Lewis, man. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 225 people in the chat. Oh, pr man. press that goddamn like button. That's right. Kayada one, top of it. Good. Kayada, he get ready to go live. Good. What time you going live, Kayada one? Sakari Detroit. You better be subscribed. Yeah, see. Yeah, I mean, we do have 203. That's pretty good. <laughs> Danny, everybody in here that liked it. Yeah, yeah, really need to get the 223. You know what that is. Yeah, see? Yeah, we wasn't dealing with psychedelics. Hey, 212, just that quick. Yeah, Geronimo, that's the real question. Praise God. That's the real question. All praises. 12 p.m. Premier Street. Y'all pray. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to Sakari Detroit or Detroit. Detroit. As y'all say it in America. <laughs> Okay, you know that's French land. That's ancient French territory. All right. Up there with them gadites up there. Yeah, Raquan, you ain't lying. I heard bitter herbs were horseradish and arugula. Yeah, you can use that. What it mean to be saved in childbirth? Talking about the kingdom of labor pains. You won't have labor pains in the kingdom. Is bear unlawful? Yes. Sheesh. Who you trying? I you, I guess they seen that video of the yeah, dude with the bird. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, killed the bird, eight birds. Life is good. I can't come to Montreal. I'm not allowed in the country of Canada. I would love to come to Montreal. My family, me, my family is there in, in Quebec. I've uh, scattered throughout Montreal, Quebec City. Things of that nature, but I, I cannot <clears throat> enter into Canada. It doesn't say the law doesn't say you can't eat creeping things. Yeah, it gives you the specific creeping things in which you can't and eat. And a bear isn't a creeping thing anyway. Yeah, at all. I don't creep. A bear can even walk behind. Stop teaching in the chat. Man. Please. Life's good, so he thinks we're related. We're all praise to the most high. Yeah, who would want to eat bear, bro? I just can't see it, bro. I can't see it. Look that up. What ancient cultures ate bear? I know somebody was eating bear. <laughs> Will there be slavery after the millennial reign? Yes. The Canaanites will perpetually be slaves. Okay. Um, but not just them. <laughs> there can, there's going to be slavery, but it's not just going to be mandated on all on a whole people group. Like Namaja said, bears got hella tapeworms. All praise, brother. Just make sure you keep tapping into the videos. You keep reading your scriptures. Some Judah is eating bear today. See those damn Judites, man. Those damn Judites, man. Right. And LMB just cut you, Isaiah. What? Hey, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth shall be an abomination. It shall not be eaten. Whatsoever go upon its belly, whatsoever go upon all four, or whatsoever hath more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth, then ye shall not eat. That's what he's talking about. Ye shall not make yourselves a bond with any creeping thing. What do you mean, uh? What do you mean, um, um, Isaiah? Because when you deal with it, like when we talk about cricket and stuff like that, yeah, you can eat crickets and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What, what is that? What is that term down there? Like, what what is that? The category of it? Uh, well, yeah, like you said, it's not a it doesn't go up on his belly. Yeah. So what he's saying by creeping thing, he mean the things that go up on their belly. Okay, cool. So I mean, but how is that re relative to what we were talking about? It's not. Yeah, at all. Saying. Which is uh, bears. Can you expound on the labor in the kingdom? These are people in Quebec. Quebec ate bear. Is the they all relied on bear as a principal source of meat. Who are they? They some gadites or they eat them ice? Uh, it says around Lake Ajibois, the Anishinaabeg people, the Inu, the Inu, 
people. Yeah, them them is some Cadillacs. Yep. Off is it? Off. Traditional animal food, but I don't want to see. <clears throat> Who else? Well, like you said, John ate bugs. So that so that's what uh the statement that we made about creeping things. Yeah. Certain of the bugs are lawful to eat. Um, but to be be specific, like the brother said, what's classified as an it's explicit creeping thing in the KJV, something that goes on all fours with its belly to the earth, yeah. or has more than four legs, are unlawful to eat. They're like centipedes and stuff. Uh huh. Like uh, ants, spiders, spiders. Spiders. Exactly. Spiders. Those things cannot be eaten. Yeah, my phone. My password was from Detroit. Well, not Detroit, really, from Grand Rapids and uh, Flint. Gun rule. Yeah, yeah, something like that. No, he said Quebec. He never said that, brother. Not, not Detroit. Um, there will be reproduction. <laughs> Quebec, that's a, that's a gallery. There will be reproduction of Kenya, of course. Are you following the Israel-Palestine war closely? Obviously. Uh, Liz is Flores. Y'all about me Shabbat Shalom. Water. Good morning, Chief. Don't question. Did was it God's grace when he forgave the guy next to him on the cross, even if he wasn't baptized or circumcised? That is, you just asked me a Christian question. When did Yahweh Shai forgive that person? The malefactor, as they call him. Yeah. There is no forgiveness there. Right. Right? Yahweh Shai just said, be cool, man. We we, we getting up out of here, bro. Sure, finna, That's all he said. We're not going to be tormented by, Any, by, by the white man Paul's. anymore. That's going to be over. There was no forgiveness there. Right? right? That's Bruh. Christianity. I think it needed some, it needed some consolation. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I just gave him a little consolation, man. It's going to be okay, bro. Yeah, a lot of people eat the crickets. You can get them. Uh, it's a car, man. They deep fry them things. Get locusts. Man. See, season them things up, man, real nice. You said what? Hell no. Nah. Fried I seen them though. The Cajun seasoning on it. I ain't really playing with them though. You know what I'm saying? You eat? Hey, well, I eat. I try. I try it Just though. For the sake of like having the stomach for it later on, yeah. if I needed to. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't get old and die, but we can also continue to reproduce. Sheesh. But you're not gonna live forever. Well, Frank, I ain't say I won't. I couldn't try. I'll try, but I just haven't. See how that works? No, it's not too late for you to circumcise. Go get circumcised ASAP. That's right. Feel me? So most high deal with your ass. You know, most I'm gonna kill uh, Moses behind that. And he loved it, Moses. See how that worked? When all the rest of them making Albert Pike's letter to Missing 1890 to detail and describe all three World War. No, I'm not familiar with Albert Pike's letter. I'm going to take a look at that. Frog is definitely unlawful. They got lollipops with the crickets in them. Fool. Oh, no, good. <laughs> I just get to the center of that motherfucker. It's just all crunchy cricket. Good. It's crazy. <laughs> I have, the, like I said, I have the, I already been acclimated to the cricket. <laughs> Before I get a, a, a cricket lollipop, I don't, I'm slick off lollipops anyway. That long going <laughs> try with a cricket in the middle of that jet. It's crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Yikes. I got circumcised the month I heard the truth. All praises. Uh, uh, Lizzie Forrest, y'all about Shamir Shabra got that What is he just trying to understand? I really enjoy your platform, but get confused if he entered the kingdom, even though he was not baptized, it doesn't say anything about him entering the kingdom. The kingdom, 2,000 years later, and the kingdom has not manifest, so he did not enter the kingdom. He said, You will be with me this day in paradise. Number one in the Greek, the term paradise is talking about a Persian garden, right. So that doesn't even represent the actual expression in which Yahweh Shai was giving him in that instance. It had nothing to do with the kingdom. It means there would be an arresting place. It would leave the physical, the spirit would leave the physical and go upwards. 
like everybody does. So it was in no wise referencing him going to the kingdom or a kingdom. It was talking about him being freed from the torments of his physical body in earth. That's it. He said, we're right. the Ninevites and Jonah, Israelites or heathens? You said what? Hold on. The Ninevites <clears throat> and Jonah. Uh, well, it's no, they're heathens. The heathens. When me and y'all were all gonna have another bill, ain't no telling. You know when the spirit. Okay, all praises, uh, Lizeth. I, I keep saying Elizabeth, Lizeth, Flores. All praise. How can I make right with the Most High? For instance, if that person was a murderer or pimp or gay, etc. If anyone has done severe things and disobeyed the commands, how do they get right? By stop doing it, by keeping the commandments. That's how you get right. Um, Luke 23, 24, and Yahweh shall send him. Verily I say unto you today, shall thou be with me in exactly paradise. Which again, that's talking about a Persian garden. Can you make a video on how it plays out from here on out from the breaking out of World War Three to the second exodus, if there is a second exodus to the final stage of the end game? I mean, you, you, you there is a video. Just look up Sakari Armageddon. You you'll get the you'll get what you're looking for there. It already exists. During Masa the Masada Masada siege, when the Sakari opted for suicide, that never happened. The Sakari never opted for suicide. That's Roman propaganda. Some of the Sakari surrendered themselves to the Romans as a distraction to let everyone else escape. This is documented. Um, the, the suicide thing has always been disputed historically. Again, only the Roman, there's like a couple Roman sources that reported that, but that is not what happened. And many of them escaped and came over here too. That's documented <coughs> that members of the Sakori made it to America. The Cherokee documented that. Do you need baptism of some sorts? I'll show you what baptism you need. Give me Psalm 119 and 9. No, we're not going to live forever. No. Should we have empathy for Palestinian people who are being killed? I mean, why not? You ready? Yeah. In this book of Psalms, chapter 119, the ninth verse, it says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way mm -hmm. by taking heed thereto according to thy word? That's how you cleanse, by taking heed to the word. So what baptism do you need? You need the baptism to wash your ways. How do you wash your ways with the water in which that is the word? That's how you cleanse yourself. That's only baptism that you need. All right? You don't need to. You take a bath all the time. Yeah. It's not about that. It's about stop doing the negative things that you do that against the most high. Right. right? Go ahead. Yeah, the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Mm -hmm. See that? The washing of water by the word. That's how you wash yourself. So when is he, po he posted the Greek? Strong's G thirty eight fifty seven for paradise. It means among the Persians, a grand enclosure or preserve, hunting ground, park, shady and well watered, a guard, a garden or pleasure, a pleasure ground. You know, so that's that's not talking about heaven right there, or like the the um kingdom. Um. Uh, toxic blood. MC says, what if someone is circumcised, but when he's not erect, it's like he's not. you're circumcised. Somebody asked, can we do exercises during the feast? What are you, what? Don't exercise on the Sabbath. <laughs> That's what I'll tell you. Yeah, they were the ones who told the Northern Kingdom about the Romans had done. Exactly. Oh, yeah, you guys. Yeah. used distraction assault tactics against the Romans for others to escape. Does Zakari never surrender? Exactly. When you do your, your history, that's what actually happened. Scripts for just go look up our videos on eternal life. The problem is our people think not dying equates to immortality. And those those two things do not equate. Right. How can you learn Paleo Hebrew? The first learn not to sin not. You'll get to Paleo Hebrew eventually. 
Let's 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 work on you getting away from that scene like you talked about. What's the white rate of pray? Um, according to Matthew six, okay, that's the right way to pray. Do you consider Ecuador as a part of the Asher tribe? Yes, the indigenous people of Ecuador are from the tribe of Asher. Certainly. Um, show my pastor uncle. The Assad and Chief Immaculate Conception video. He still hasn't responded. He's done. Do you have a Sakari history breakdown on the ancient Sakari? Probably some years ago. Been a long time. The right way to pray is given to you in Matthew the sixth chapter. The Our Father. And to not do it in like not make a spectacle of it. Whatever. Unk is done. That's crazy. Is Adon in Genesis 49 connected to the Omics? Yes. That's a reference to the Omics. This 3D menorah thing really blew my mind. Still all praise as well. It's all in the spirit. It was pretty magnificent when I saw it myself. Is betting unlawful? No. But like anything, it can become habit forming and become addictive and destroy your life. The same way alcohol is not unlawful, but can do the same thing. Um, you know, so you got to watch things. Um, what will be the roles of the 144 when their time will come for their mortal life? Women will not be a part of the 144. What were the roles of the 144 when the time yeah, comes? Yeah, you got to rewrite that, but no women are a part of the 144. Let's start there. Is it saying what will their, yeah, I can, I'm trying, bro. What will be their moral life while they are here? Yeah, I understand. Why did our Northern Kingdom brothers um, marry? <clears throat> Namely, the Aztecs think Yahweh Shai was white. They, 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 they never thought that Yahweh Shai was white. Yeah. That's not real. You could look at all their depictions of Quetzalcoatl. He's dark. He's, he's the darkest one on the damn depictions. Uh -huh. So they never thought that. Right. He had a white beard and white feathers. Good. Right? They never thought that he was white. That is, you have to be able to look out for the propaganda. The white man said that about them. They never said that about, the, they never said that themselves. Right, and they never depicted that. How do you get fringes out of your to your clothes? You go to the fabric store, you buy fringes, and you sew them on your clothes. You have somebody sew them on your clothes. The counter is at Shabbat dot date. If I had a position on the tribe of Dan, you would have seen a video about it. Is it Flores? Yeah, about Shamil Shabbat Shalom. What? What? Okay, she said. I remember you from City Heights, San Diego. Man, Woo, we were just talking about the videos. Yeah, that's spirit. powerful. Shout out to this sister. She's been around apparently. Yeah, she remember us from City Heights, Fairmont, and Whitman University, and uh, Fairmont there in the City Heights area, East Dago. Um, I personally don't have any plans of of coming anywhere. <laughs> West of Las Vegas presently, sister. I'm just so over it. But, uh, you know, the brothers are out there. They're actually camping, teaching at Mission Beach now. In Mission Beach. Uh, no problem. Jake for Life 45. What is the role of 144 when they time come? And or will there be mortal life when they arrive? There will certainly be mortal life there. The role of the 144,000 is to rule. Do I have a plug on pants that aren't mixed fabric? Minimal. M-N-M-L dot L-A. I just gave you a gem, nigga. What you just <laughs> Minimal. M-N-M-L dot L-A. Is it a law to pray three times a day? No. 
epic footage. Over, oh, uh, I need a real breakdown of Edge of Zakari. Okay, bro, we really need y'all back in mean, We got brothers. Uh, what's bro in Minneapolis again? Kanai, no, not Kanayala. Kayala Salakia. He looked. He looked. He he looked like Kanayala's uh uh little brother that is was bad or something. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Kayala, aka Sakari boss up. You little badass little brother. You know what I'm saying? Got a few brothers out there in that Minneapolis, huh? It's bro, we got brothers out there. You know? How many times do you have to pray in a day? Well, the scriptures encourage you to pray without ceasing. That's my answer. Oh, there they go, Akaz. One. You know? What is the thing about women in pants? Some say it's unlawful. I don't know what they're talking about. They they just totally misunderstanding a Bible verse and going off of some real old Christian um right. tradition. Seven yeah, seven day Adventist tradition or something. This it's that ain't it. I remember I had a girl, I, I was used to be messing with these seven day Adventist bras, man, back in the day. They used to be like, Man, we can't even be wearing earrings to church. We can't wear no makeup to church. They still I was like, God damn. <laughs> Feel me like. But it's cold. As soon as you leave, you put it on. Yeah, exactly. The, the hypocrisy of yeah, Christianity. Yeah, yeah. So if the women can't be a part of the 144, what would it be? Doing? What are, young Adam, what are you talking about? It's called the one third. But... It would be all kind of people there. The the 144 are nothing if there aren't people that are contemporarily existing with them yeah. that are not them. Yeah. What do I mean? The gift that the Most High has given through Yahweh Shai to the 144 is rulership. If there's nobody to rule, what is a rulership? Let's get your brain off of Christianity, King. We got to get it off of Christianity. You thought women can't wear pants? Well, where is that in the Bible? Where is pants in the Bible? <laughs> Please. I would love to see where pants are in the Bible. And don't go to britches. Yeah, the drawers are not pants. <laughs> they don't went to britches. That's drawers. Most I said, you priests better put some drawers on up on your garment. Okay, okay. Right? Yeah. That ain't got nothing to do with pants. That's right. At all. People talking about women can wear pants? Well, let's just follow your logic. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Man shall not wear that which pertains to a woman. Okay, cool. So if I go in a store, there's a women's department, there's a man's department. In the men's department, there is pants. In the women's department, there is pants. So I would love to see how that relates to pants if there are pants that pertain to women. Come on now. Let's use our mind. Hey, like, 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 like the brother Gordon Stray say, bring your whole bring mind. mind. Hey, young Adam, mind. we just talk like this, bro. We ain't getting on your ass or nothing, bro. We just, you know, we just talk like this. Y'all gotta understand something, man. I don't, you're young. He says young. Okay. You may be a young man. Okay. But you see, we come from a, a generation and a time amongst black people and Hispanic people. This is just how we talk. Yeah. Right? I don't know how y'all get down. I know I got a nine year old daughter. Um, she's very tough on her six-year-old brother because she said the world is tough. <laughs> yeah. The world is tough. She told this man, right? So, bro, we just got to be tough. Somebody want to break down for uh, Isaiah. So, somebody said, who invented pants for women? Who invented pants for men? Right. <laughs> what is he talking about? What are, it, 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 pants for men isn't in the Bible. Right. Right? Stop it, please. Where we at? Somebody want Hosea 4 and 14. Let's go. The book of the prophet Hosea, chapter 4, verse 14. This is a cold one. I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, mm -hmm. nor your spouses when they commit adultery. Uh -huh. For themselves are separated, for, for yeah, for themselves are separated with whores, mm -hmm. and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore, the people that do not understand shall fall. Yeah, so it's talking about the most high because of 
the lust, especially for ritualistic harlots, sacred harlots, um, ancient strip clubs, uh, groves that the men of Israel were participating in. The most I said, I'm not punishing your daughters and your wives. They can go be the biggest hoes and sluts that they want to be. We can see that now. That happened in a antiquity. You can see it now, though. Yeah. These women are at the red lights twerking on the headlights. During the sexy red spirit, there's no punishment. There's no judgment. Right. They're committing adultery. They got niggas all over the place. Right. All liberty. They're on OnlyFans. Yeah. There's no judgment, punishment. Why? Because you love it. Let me start up a little bit so they can get the concept. Because you it really can. explains it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the book of the prophet Hosea, chapter four, we're going to start at verse, verse nine. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their doings. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart. My people ask counsels at their stock and their staff declares unto them for the spirit of whoredoms have caused them to err and they have gone whoring from under their God. Mm -hmm. See that the spirit of whoredoms have caused them to err, and they've gone a horse so idolatry. That idolatry led to participating in idolatrous prostitution, right? So the Canaanite women, they're doing their ritual, dancing around a damn tree, and you paying the money to take them in the back, do your thing with them. Now you're separate. Now you're worshiping their god, and you're separated, or or, or you're a holy prostitute, not holy in our god, holy, but holy according to that god. Right, go ahead. Uh, it says, verse uh, verse thirteen, they sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills mm -hmm. under oaks and poplars and elms because the shadow of the river is good. Therefore, your daughters shall commit whoredom and your spouses shall commit adultery. But I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery. For themselves are separated with whores and they sacrifice with harlots. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the people that do of not understand shall fall. Right. There you go. So that's where they come from. Mm -hmm. You just get back. Most I just get, you know. Mm -hmm. Most I just showing you how he feels. So now your women can be whores and nothing you can do about it. And I ain't going to do nothing to them about it. You deal with it. Most I, man. That's how he get down. He like to teach lessons, man. Is voodoo bad? Yes. Get an ancient strip club called the Grove. Yes, I'm familiar with the frequencies in the the fabric, which is why the Most High told us not to uh, mingle fabric. We don't know what the kingdom is going to look like, man. We really don't know, and, and and we can't we can't actually even imagine it, according to scripture. Right. Yeah, it's a lot. Even if the style of architecture might be one deemed, you know, something about our kingdom or the way we did things, the materials may not be archaic. Right. So, ain't no telling, bro. Judah Princess asks, "How can we receive our Hebrew names from you?" Uh, well, I give out Hebrew names to people who become soldiers in the Sakari. Um, I give certain other people Hebrew names as well, but, um, you know, I, I don't just be giving them out. Sister Judah Princess Salakia. <laughs> yeah, Ze Zephaniah one of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that very, very weak attempt at breaking something down. <laughs> it's the book of the prophet Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8 and this shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice mm -hmm. that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel <laughs> they talking about that's women wearing pants right go ahead give me that precept uh, there is Sakari in Europe we're in the Netherlands Frank White says well, we have football in the kingdom um, why not 
<laughs> this is the book of Baruch chapter 5 verse 2. It says, cast about thee a double garment of the righteousness mm -hmm. which comes from God. So the strange apparel is not talking about women wearing pants. Right. It's talking about other doctrines contrary to righteousness. That's supposed to be our garment, figuratively. Like the nakedness of Adam and Eve right. goes back there. He said that the uh, elect were clothed in white. Yeah, you mm -hmm. think all of them literally got to wear white? You wear white, yeah, nah, come on, man. That's symbolic. You know, so yeah, definitely got nothing to do with pants, man. Brothers got to stop with the reaching. I'm talking about reaching. We just going to keep teaching while they keep reaching, man. You know, you reach out, teach, you know, I know how that go. Whole lot of that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Basically, brothers teach. We can, yeah, cause, cause when you, when people say that, um, pants pertain to men, then that, then men can wear women's pants. Go get some leggings, go to the women's section and go get some, see what you have to understand when you, when you understand denim, you understand that inseams are designed for men and then you have inseams that are designed for women. They're cut in certain ways to cater to the physiological makeup of each gender of each uh, sex, so to speak. So, uh, yeah. How can you say beats? I mean, you can email me. I'm not really interested in rapping right now. Um, but you can email me. Is Esau performing exorcisms? Like the yeah, yeah, well, they're they're just demons talking to each other. <laughs> demons playing with more demons. You feel me? I feel like all of Esau's tribes and the other tribes of the world, Magog, etc., are all in cahoots. With each other to release really storm. Well, they're not all in cahoots with each other at this point. They're going to war with each other. No, you can't only receive your Hebrew name that way. It's ideal, but ain't got to happen. You know? Would I say the earth is four to 6,000 years old? No, I would say about 12,000, according to the Bible. You can get that. The earliest pair of pants were found in China, I suppose. Okay, well, you know, yeah. Ain't got nothing to do with the ancient world. Therefore, to superimpose that on that verse is pretty crazy. It's the book of the prophet uh, Ezra, the second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 10. For the world has lost his youth and the times began to wax old. For the world is divided into 12 parts. And the ten parts of it are gone already, in half of a tenth part. Mm -hmm. And there remain of that which is after the half of the tenth part. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, it said, yeah, yeah. And there remain of that which is after the half of the tenth. Twenty five hundred. Right. So that was about twenty five hundred years ago, right? Um, AJ, you want to understand Adam and Eve? Just look up Sakari Genesis. Click on the video for chapters two and three. <clears throat> Um. Yeah, ancient garments had different splits. So that's the cut of the ancient garments is what differentiated. Um, yeah, them seams, different seams, different seams. Yeah. It says, uh, "You want to break down signature five and eight? Women shall bring. I mean, it's really simple. Bring women shall bring. Uh, bring forth monsters. Mistress, women shall bring forth monsters. Yeah. Whew, that's a cold one. That's what they, we got to blow the dust off that one." It's been some years. Are there any nations that will be completely wiped out? Eat them. Outside of Esau, no. Where's Yahweh shot now? At the right hand of Yahweh. See, he's seated to the right hand of his father until his father sends him back. Go ahead. Go ahead, start at the top. <clears throat> the book of Second Edges, chapter, uh, first Edges, Second Edges, chapter five, verse one. Nevertheless, as concerning the tokens, behold, the days shall come that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in a great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden, and the land shall be barren of faith. But iniquity shall it shall be increased above that which now thou sees, and or uh, that thou hast heard long ago. And the land that thou seest now to have root shall thou see wasted suddenly. It says, uh, 
verse 4, but if the Most High grant thee to live, thou shalt see after the third trumpet that the sun <laughs> shall suddenly shine again in the night. Mm -hmm. And get the, the moon get the information. Brightly. The information was going to start coming back out about this truth. Go ahead. Kind. That the sun shall suddenly shine again in the night and the moon thrice in the day. Mm -hmm. And blood shall drop out of wood and the stone shall give his voice mm -hmm. and the people shall be troubled. And even he shall rule whom they look not for that dwell upon the earth. And the fowls shall take their flight away together. And the Sodomitish sea <laughs> shall cast out fish mm -hmm. and make a noise in the night. It is a Sodomitish goddamn sea. Go yeah. ahead. It says, and make a noise in the night, mm -hmm. which many have not known, but they shall all hear the voice thereof. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. There shall be a confusion also in many places, mm -hmm. and the fire shall be often sent out again. The wars, go ahead. And the wild beasts shall change their places, and mistress women shall bring forth monsters. Mm -hmm. You're talking about birth defects. Babies are going to be born with birth defects. That's a monster. An increase in birth defects. Right, and a, a mass increase in birth defects. Um, do I believe the abomination of desolation? That's it happened in the past. There's no temple standing now to even have an abomination of desolation. Okay. Yeah, man, we get ready. Uh, uh, fringes or ZZs, either one you could wear. Um, we get ready to wrap things up. We're going to give all praise, honor, glory to Abinawi, Yahweh, Ba, Shema, Ba, Shaki, Yahweh, Shai. Um, you know, appreciate y'all. Make sure, again, y'all hit the bell here on Chief Dome sporadically there will be lives here that will be edifying there will be q and a's we'll be going into topics that we're not going into necessarily all the time on other channels um so again definitely hit the bell um they just monetize so you can send a super chat a super thanks whatever um again we give all praise honor and glory to abanawi yahweh by shema mashiach yahweh shai and we say uh shalom 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 now you gotta you gotta take me down.